What is up, everyone, and welcome to The WAN Show. We've got a lot of great topics to go through today. I cannot believe how quickly Dark Viper AU... Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, Dark Viper responded to our plans to make a reaction channel, but uh, he did, so we'll be... Talking about that? Let's uh, react to that. We're also going to be talking about perfectly good two-year-old MacBooks. Okay, I was I was with you perfectly good up until... <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so they're for MacBooks. They're perfectly good and are apparently being scrapped because of activation lock. Okay, in all seriousness, though, yes, MacBooks are perfectly good if they're two years old, and that's a bad thing. But it's also a bit more complicated than that. What else we got today? Uh, you know, stuff. CNET issues mass corrections for AI-written articles. <laughs> this is actually hilarious. I'm excited for <laughs> it's that. It's, like, really funny. <laughs> yeah, it's and, good. And what else do we do? What else do we do? Uh, Linus talks about washing his butt. Re really? Yeah, why not? Seriously, you I'm don't want to do that. public backlash against Microsoft for reducing gamers' power bills? It's pretty funny, too. I don't even understand. It's actually hilarious. Okay, because I don't get it. Yeah, you, you won't get it any. No, don't read it now. Then okay. I, let me let me tell it. Let me tell you about it. All right. Oh, we have a fun new segment I, to introduce this week. Mm. It's going to be called Original Sauce. <laughs> it didn't help me understand at all. The show is brought to you today by Kudos, Sea Sonic, and The Ridge. All right, let's get this party started. I am going to get right out ahead of this and say I meant to watch Dark Viper's video, but I actually haven't. I did see that it went up. I actually read the vast majority of the comments on it because that's how I consume YouTube. I don't that really... That is true. He, that, this is true. I don't watch videos. I just read the he comments just reads on the them. Comments. I've, I've watched this happen. I didn't really believe it the first time you told me. This is actually true, though. <laughs> you can actually get... You can you can get a deal... Okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. I, we're, we're going off the rails here. We're going off the rails already. I would make the argument, and this is going to be a controversial take. It sure is. I would make the argument that you can actually get a deeper understanding of a video based on reading... A sig I'm, not, I'm not talking if you read like four comments. I'm talking a video that has a lot of interaction. You read several hundred comments on it. Okay? I am arguing that you can get a deeper understanding of A, what was discussed, and B, the greater context of it by reading the comments under a video versus actually watching the video. People should try this. With that said... I did make sure someone watched it, so I had our new WAN show writer watch it and summarize it, and I will be responding. <laughs> so after last week's discussion of a future Linus Media Group reaction channel, uh, GTA Let's Player and commentator Dark Viper responded with a video essay entitled, Is It Even Possible for Reaction Content to Be Ethical? Because if you guys remember last week, that was one of the uh, sort of guidelines that I laid out for what exactly our reaction content could look like. Um, Dark Viper praised my desire, apparently. I didn't watch the video, but this is <laughs> evidently true. Um, to make ethical reaction content. Um, but he claims that reaction content fundamentally cannot be ethical and questions the impact of a channel as large as LTT embracing it. Do we want to get to the end before we comment? No, I think we can start commenting now because okay. step one... Let's fire on that. And I saw a lot of this in the comments as well which is how I processed the video, because I'm a reader, <laughs> not a video watcher. Uh, um, first of all, there are a lot, man, and it's not just this. Like, you know, whether it's when people feel like we're not calling out a manufacturer hard enough for their pricing or, or whatever else it is, people seem to really overestimate the amount of sway that I have. I do not have the kind of power that people seem to think I have. Like we, we are we are a substantial player in the YouTube space. Won't deny that. I mean, I get my invitation to Top Creator Summit or Creator Summit or whatever they whatever they call it now. And you know, there's some. I, I look around. I'm like, whoa, okay. I'm rubbing elbows with some pretty 
pretty big uh, online creators. Apparently, I, they think I belong here, so that's cool, right? You know, obviously, we're not we're not tiny little minnows in in the in the, the ocean that is YouTube, but I do not single-handedly have the power to make or break uh, a, a style of content. I think that might be so. Some pranks, some, reactions, some context here. I think that might be a category thing. If you are someone who consumes a lot of gaming slash tech stuff, right, your name's going to be all over everything. So the 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 perception might be an increased amount. You know what I mean? I see. The other thing is Dark Viper. Okay. At least some degree likes the channel. Okay. Has worn LTT shirts in videos before. Sure. So within his specific bubble might be big as well. And then another thing is, sure. okay. I think just as much as the statement that you said might be correct, I think at the exact same time, in the exact same realm, the idea that you underestimate is probably also true. Because an aspect that I, uh, I would bring up here is about the cannot possibly be ethical thing. I saw that and kind of frowned for a second. I was like, how can that be? That doesn't make... Because we talked about how you could just... You would ask people first, right? Yeah. You'd get approval first. Sure. Is that fair? So you're going to talk about the power imbalance then. Yes. I see. Because if it's a small channel, well, they might not want to piss you off. I see. <sighs> okay. I have been guilty of not considering that aspect of things before. Um, it's it's a it's a tough and annoying thing to consider. Yeah, I mean it's tough. It's really tough because from my point of view, when I was a smaller channel, yes, there were times when I definitely bent over backwards to do something for a larger channel. But um, there were also times when I just either directly, uh, usually not directly, but would just kind of uh, blow off a larger channel and just say, ah, maybe someday. And then just kind of, you know, passive aggressively never reply. Like I, I never really struggled with saying no. Yeah. But, but some people might. I can see how some people might. Um, but again, I have to come back to this. I don't have the kind of power you might think that I do. Like, whatever negative consequences you might feel I could somehow bestow, whatever a negative bestow is, <laughs> inflict upon you. you. Yeah, th that's a better word. Whatever you think I could do to you, I probably can't. Like, and, and I've, again, I've been told this before, like, yeah, if you're a small channel, like, uh, Linus dumping on you could, could fear, destroy your channel. The fear might be there, though. Regardless of the possibility, the fear might still be real. Yeah, but, 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 <laughs> uh, but I can't do anything about that. I can't do anything about people's fear. All and, I can do is tell you that... And full, full transparency, I haven't watched it either, so I don't know if you brought up this argument, but... <laughs> Wow. I had a really most busy professional, week. most <laughs> professional podcast. Wait, we're doing what he wanted. We're Good not, show. We're not, we're not, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're not only not going to play your content on the show, we're not even going to watch it. <laughs> we're just, we're just, we're just taking from the comments. Okay. Okay. No, this is a really good point from Joni B over on float plane chat. Realistically, if I dunk on a small channel, the backlash You're on gonna look me. Like an idiot. Yeah, I'm going to look like a asshole. And it's true. Like even times when we didn't even do anything. Like remember when um uh remember when content ID got enabled for the channel through our MCN. And what happened was there were some smaller channels that were getting um screen capture of Unigen Heaven benchmark identified by content ID, and then their videos were getting like claimed for monetization by us. The, the immediate reaction, without anybody even asking us, even these content creators, nobody took a second to ask, hey, is this on purpose, uh, or is this a bug? The, it was incredible. It was incredible how quickly I was vilified. And I was like, I had no idea. And... I will immediately, upon becoming aware of this, do absolutely everything in my power to make it right. But, like, put down the pitchforks, please. Like, there is no way, with the number of times that I've been burned by even the 
perception that I would do something anti-community, uh, anti-other creators, or, or whatever it is, I, 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 wouldn't even, I wouldn't even start to touch it. And so I just, I mean, I've made mistakes. I mean, there was that time I made the silly voice uh, for Pokimane's take on something. I, I don't even remember what it was. It doesn't matter anymore. Uh, like, I, I certainly make mistakes, but, uh, I mean... Oh, yeah. No, 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 man. I, I can't do anything to you. If you're a smaller creator, you got to remember, too, like, you're punching up. Like, I'm a jerk if I if I go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you at this point. So, anyway, uh, Dark Viper. Um, Dark Viper argues that the prolif... Oh, you know what? No, I haven't finished addressing that. So, yeah, the, 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 the potential for people to just feel like they're being pressured or coerced into agreeing... That's valid. We would have to find some way to address that. I don't have any immediate ideas. I mean, uh, one thing is you could just reach out proactively with some kind of offer. And this would be tough because YouTube doesn't have a mechanism. I mean, maybe this is something I can pitch. That's a power I have. I can pitch ideas to YouTube. Um, but maybe this is something I can pitch. It's like, hey, you guys a already... React suggestion? Well, no, not, not even that. Like, uh, I'm talking more along the lines of some kind of like a revenue share. Like, hey, you guys already have the ability <sighs> to tag a collaborating creator. Well, what if you could just deepen that capability and you could tag a collaborating creator... Uh, for revenue share. That'd be really interesting, actually. It might be difficult because people being in like different jurisdictions, for example, um, that might not even have the same ad suitability for eligibility, right? So it might play an ad that is not even eligible for monetization in that, in that jurisdiction, right? It might so, be annoying and they might not be willing to do it because of that, but it might be one of those situations where just only certain zones can collaborate with other ones. But that's like that's that's that annoying. sucks, right? That's yeah. That's why I said they might not make it. Yeah. See, that's that. not that's not a creator centric approach. I mean, I would say that even if there's some limitations, it would be better for us to say, hey, in in the interest of you know, a fair play, we really would like you to do your best to kind of divvy it up eighty ten ten uh, according to you know how much of the their source content that that we used. I mean that way. I think there's a, there's a very strong argument to be made that while you should still stay well within the the guidelines or pillars of fair use, um, at least then if you you know stray a little bit over the line, or at least then if you have an agreement with them, you can kind of say, well, everyone got paid, so cool. Um, so that that would be that would be one way to take care of it. And for those of you who are who are going to propose that you know maybe we just like issue checks or whatever, I can tell you right now, the admin on this would absolutely destroy it. We'd basically just never react to anything and be like, no, f it. Like, Yvonne's wrist would be too tired to do much more important things if she had to sign that many checks. Yeah. Significantly more important things. Um... So Dark Viper argues that the proliferation of parasitic reaction content, uh, such as certain kinds of live streaming, has negatively impacted creators of original content and has pushed more creators to also make reaction content. <coughs> I mean, yeah, I, 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 was, I feel like I was completely transparent with the community last week. I, I said, look, this is the lowest hanging possible fruit. Like, it, it, it boggles my mind. It's, it's one of those genres that I don't personally consume i don't personally get it um but i can't ignore the appeal people love it like do you know how hard jake in particular has been a champion of react content here whether it's um actually i, I think it was it would uh linus reacts to mean comments was a james initiative more than jake damn it <laughs> But both of them. You're even dropping fake GPUs. I mean, this one's safe at least. Yeah. But both of them have pushed hard. Like, we'll have a week when we're kind of sitting there going, oh, man, we're really going to struggle to hit quota this week. And they're like, dude. Do the easy just thing. Just react it. We have had an I issue for a long time. Yeah. This is completely ignoring the React content thing just for a second. It, it touches on this, but yeah. we have had an issue for a very long time of just refusing to take easy wins. <laughs> 
And if, if we're like, hey, that project sounds not difficult and also highly profitable, the answer is just like, no. We need to find the more difficult project, which has a Look, less likeliness of no, making No, it's money. not that. It's not that. I'm obviously exaggerating There are a bunch, other reasons. But there has been some of that. The reason sure. is that I find it boring. And Fair I find enough. it lazy and I don't respect it. Like that's So then why are you doing a React channel? Because we're running a business here. So I have a hundred people to support. Yeah. And so this is the same reason why we used to argue <laughs> to take the low hanging fruit. It's the exact same argument. I'm happy you're on our side now. <laughs> I was to be fair, it wasn't always React content, or if it was React content, <sighs> this well, is where we get into it. It wasn't reacting to other people's generated video content sure. it was reacting to user comments or whatever else um but yeah <clears throat> i mean it's one of the uh, like w sticking with what i like has been a winning strategy for this channel for like 14 years when i get bored of something and i get bored of things like real quick styles other people are likely getting bored of it as well they might not even realize they're getting bored of it yet. And if I move on, it's like, it's classic showbiz. Always leave them wanting more. Yeah. If I move on before you guys get a chance to go, oh, I really wish they'd like move on from You, you don't want to make that or, next season of the TV show. If the next season of the TV show is going to be crap and everyone's going to remember that show as ending really poorly. Yeah, it's, cla it's Game of Thrones. Yeah. Game of Thrones right there, right? As much as it sucks, you would rather Firefly than Game of Thrones. And... Uh, too soon. <laughs> and the thing is that... Yeah. And the thing is that... Like, it's not wrong of me to trust that and say, look, I feel like this is... I feel like this is cheap... I feel like it cheapens the brand. I feel like it looks low effort. I feel like it does this. I feel like it does that. Um, you know what? I've ended up being wrong in some of those cases. No, the consumer was not savvy enough to recognize that this is low effort garbage and they want more <laughs> low effort garbage. Okay, fine. I'll give it to them. Or they want to. I mean, we figured that out with, uh, with video quality, right? But no what's, one cares. But what's critical, what's absolutely critical and what I will never back no, down from care. is that for every upload that you do that is like low effort like okay for example um uh, we uploaded a tier list for the first time or not uploaded we a recorded a tier list video for the first time ever um right in the lead up to the wan show today okay yeah i don't even know what it is so we did we did gpu tiers over 20 years okay yep um for every one of those you upload you have to upload something original and thoughtful and compelling or, or multiple things that are original, thoughtful, and compelling. Oh, is that full plane exclusive right now? No, no, it's going to go up on YouTube. Oh, uh, it's just not up yet. Yeah, it's recorded, but it's not actually... Understood. Yeah. Um, so it's just like ranking GPU generations. Um, so first of all, we put way more effort into it than some people would. Like, it's not just live reactions to There's it. There's like reasons we, why, stuff like that. Yeah, we had someone working on researching it for like a few days. And then I sat down and I did a marathon, like two and a half hour script review where we fact checked things and I added some of my own things that I remembered and, and all that kind of stuff. Like it's a really good video. Um, okay, so that's not a good example. But if we were gonna do <laughs> if we were gonna do some kind of low effort, low hanging fruit content, there has to be a reason that people care about your two cents on reacting to this or, you know unboxing that or whatever the case may be and so that's something that i will absolutely not be backing down on and if anything we are quadrupling down on because that's a big part of what the lab is going to do so when jake and i do a silly vlog like you know swapping out a couch or something you know in a theater room right when we also are like hey and uh we're going to change out the projector screen and the projector because uh, the lab tested it, and these are like the best bang for the buck, or they're the like just like S tierist uh, projector and screen or whatever else. Uh, you're going to be able to trust that our low effort content and our and our low hanging fruit opinions are going to be backed by by data by by due diligence. That's what we're trying to build ourselves toward. So we just have to be careful not to see that those view numbers. And kind of go, well, this gravy train will go forever because I've seen, and I'm not going to name any names. I don't feel like it. It's just not worth it. But I've seen 
large, very reaction-focused channels that used to do a lot of challenges or a lot of like comedy stuff, and then just saw how well reactions performed, and then went to straight reactions. I've seen them just nosedive. I've also seen them do the opposite. Yes, yes, this is true. But I don't think anyone would watch Beast Reacts without the main Mr. Beast channel. I just don't think they would. Why should I care what this guy with like a weird mustache I've thinks? I've never watched any of it, so I have no idea. Well, it's just him, but reacting. And they gamify it a little bit. They, they, they always find ways to innovate, those guys. But um, why would I watch this if I didn't know who Mr. Beast was? Well, there's, there's yep. channels that are entirely based around just reacting. And they basically have only ever been that way. So, like, yes, but really it can work for some people. We're going to get back into the argument we had last week about what reaction Probably. is. Like, I would argue that something like Good Mythical Morning is heavily reaction-based. In fact, you've probably heard me make the argument... Uh, actually, I don't know if you've ever heard me say this. This is something I say to the new writers a lot. Basically, 80 to 90% of YouTube is reaction videos. I haven't heard you say that before. I define it extremely broadly. And the reason for that is that it puts them in the right frame of mind to write a video for a YouTube viewer. Because a YouTube viewer is not the same as a TV viewer. Okay, I think I see where you're going. Okay. And so okay. the reason that I would define... YouTube viewers and the way that I the reason that I or the reason that I would categorize YouTube viewers differently and the reason that I would say that most YouTube videos are reactions is right in the name of the site, right? YouTube. That was the whole point. The whole point was real people. So no matter what it is, maybe it's a review. My review of a new GPU is fundamentally a reaction video. I am reacting to it. You only care because you care what I think. That's the whole point. And only super produced, super sterile, like corporate run channels are not reactions. So whether it's unboxing Kinder Surprises or whether it's, you know, uh, playing with some toy or like whatever, whatever it is, whether it's like, you know, man. I'd say like maybe maybe tutorials would be a category that that does not qualify as a reaction video, but I, think some I would, of them would I would also say that many tutorial videos are going to inherently include they people want that personality. And if you aren't reacting, you're basically you're a stiff out there. I think this is a one word two definition scenario though. Sure. Cuz you're using the word correctly, but you're sure. not using the word correctly in the way that modern content creators are using the word that's i and i think they're both using it just like in different ways sure um but yeah that makes sense and that's an interesting way to frame it yeah so i mean yeah dark viper's point that uh the proliferation of react content has pushed more creators to also make it yeah sure 100 percent. sure no doubt. Um, Dark Viper calls for Linus and other creators considering reaction channels to not only find a way to limit harm, but also to but to always create something new and transform it. Oh, yeah, okay, yes. So, I, I, way ahead of you. D definitely. Because I, I feel like at some point, if all you do is just create derivative works, it, it hurts the brand, right? You won't be seen as an innovator. Like, I, I think... I think that one of the reasons that people seem to feel like I have this outsized impact on the platform or on other creators is because we have gone out of our way to do things our own way. For better or for worse, we've reinvented a lot of wheels. Which sometimes people have copied and whatnot. Yeah, which some, and which sometimes have crashed and burned and thankfully nobody copied. Yeah. Right? Uh, but I feel like uh, we do have a reputation for doing our own thing, which is... Which is good, and no, this is not uh, this is not going to to harm that. Those um, weird nerds up in Canada. Yeah, Dark Viper further argues that LMG did not make this decision to highlight small creators. It's a business decision, potentially very profitable. I mean, I was transparent about that as well, so I don't really know what the point of bringing that up is. Yes, I mean it was a business decision. It's Again, very clear. You didn't watch the video, neither did I. You might not say it that way. Right. Okay. Fair enough. But like, yes. Uh, yes. Correct. Yeah. Um, however, however, 
in order to make ethical reaction videos, we did talk about the necessity of highlighting smaller creators. And there have been video concepts that have been pitched internally that have existed solely for that reason. Uh, one that we've started a couple of times and then just we've gotten busy or like the writer's gotten bogged down or assigned to something else or whatever else. So it's not on purpose that we never completed it, but one was like a, like a small creator showcase one. I think James got as far as um, like getting like 20 on a list and then he wanted to pare it down to like six or something like that and then wanted to like really watch a lot of the content so we could highlight some of the like really great things they did. And so I think it was one of those ones where he just got a little too ambitious and it didn't make it across the finish line. But um, I mean, it is something that we do consider even if, no, you're right, it wasn't the, the primary motivation for creating a Reacts channel. Um, JP note. Uh, oh, okay, this is the uh, the, the writer. Uh, part of the problem is that the term reaction content has an extremely broad uh, usage and can include everything from highly creative content like Good Mythical Morning to zero effort reposts where some jerk with a green screen stares into space in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Jaden in full plane chat said, I think you need to be more clear what you're doing. Dark Viper's point is that with live streamer reaction, reactors, it's nearly impossible to have fair use since they haven't already seen the content and can't guarantee there will be substantial content added or that uh, only what's needed is included. Well, as far as my understanding, it's not a live streaming thing though, right? No. Yeah, so I don't... Yeah, no, no. I mean, I think it's a fair point though. And so, yeah, I, I should clarify that it would be it would be edited and the goal would be to make it a highly entertaining standalone piece of content. Like, don't expect us to just start reacting to, I don't know, stuff that's outside of our realm, but, like, uh, you know, reacting to sports fails. Like, like why? Uh, our goal isn't to just go full variety, just broad spectrum, just shotgun approach to, to our content creation. Uh, the idea would be to find content that would be well within our wheelhouse to, to, to yeah, discuss like something, something, and comment uh, on. The, the whole mineral oil PC thing was like my thing for a long time. Yeah. Um, and a group that has kind of carried that torch a little bit more has been Toasty Bros. Nice. Um, they have, let's see here, do they have like a top videos thing? No, they don't do that. I know they've had, um, yeah, I mean, if you go to their homepage and you go to custom, you scroll down and you see custom builds. First mineral PC running Windows 10 and filling it up, 4 million views from eight years ago. AMD FX9590 and RX 460, eight core mineral oil PC, world's first mineral oil PC with Windows 11, Ryzen mineral oil PC and filling it up. Nice. They do mineral oil PC stuff. I think reacting to some of it could be cool and could yep. maybe boost them, but I would only want to do that if they also thought that would be cool yep. and that it might boost them. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Well, I've been waiting for LTT Sports Reacts. <laughs> no, Luke, no, you haven't. Luke reacts to Conrad's God tier Dota gameplay. I would actually, I would, I would do that. No, that won't be necessary. I would, I would commentate. Yeah, that maybe doesn't go on the channel, but I would, uh, our would discussion question here. Uh, we've got two. So one is that there's clearly a strong demand for reaction style content? Is there value in providing the best possible version of that content? So obviously I think so, otherwise I, I wouldn't do it, but I mean, you have no horse in this race. Uh, I don't think you should just do whatever there's a strong demand for, and I think you would make that same argument. Um, and best possible version, if that best possible version is still trash, I don't think it should be made. Um, I think there's a lot of ethical questions, but if those can be overcome, that there is potential for good. I do think that's definitely a thing. I have no idea what Toasty Bro's opinion of what I said earlier is, but if they thought that was good, I think that would be a good example. Um, I would somewhat struggle to see you finding enough of those scenarios every week. But maybe you could. I don't know. Well, I'm not I'm, saying it's not going to happen. I just think it might be hard. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know as much as I do, creators are a little rough with communication from time to time. Um, Myself included. So, like, you might reach out a bunch and just not hear back, or you're going to hear back in two months, or you're going to hear back immediately, but then not get the confirmation on the next thing for two weeks or, yeah. or whatever else. So, like... Yeah, it do be like that. You're putting yourself at, at a lot of risk of... of 
communication woes completely screwing your production pipeline. Um, and then that putting pressure on the team whose goals potentially and, and, and whatnot for quarters or however it works um, is based around getting enough videos out in that sure. section and then completely outside of their control. Not necessarily because they could shoot more broad spectrum. They could hit up more people. Yeah, at and time, we can react to our own stuff, stuff too. Wow. There's an ethical reaction channel. Yeah. LTT I mean, reacts to LTT. Man. And you only react to your own things. Oh, man. I came across the funniest video. You could do like LMG members react to Linus talking, uh, announcing news on the WAN show that they've never heard of before. We have probably... company. I have probably personally made more tech videos that I completely forget than most other channels have ever uploaded. Yeah. Like, for real, though. Um, we uploaded a video, and this, this is hilarious. I came across this today because uh, as we were working on the tier list video, I, I was like, yeah, hold on. What, 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 what were the circumstances around the launch of the GTX Titan? So I was, I was looking. Was Luke in any of those videos? Because I wanted to find one that we were both in. Yeah, I don't see, think yet. I couldn't remember yet. I don't know. I, I couldn't remember either. So I went back <laughs> and I was looking at our GTX Titan videos, and we had one called Early GTX Titan Benchmarks. You click on the video, it's about a minute long. And basically, before the NDA, I take the card, I've got it on the bench. I'm like, yeah, here's our test bench. I remember that. <laughs> we I, uploaded that. I pull the card off. I'm like, okay, so what's really important when you're benchmarking is you get it correctly positioned oh. on the bench. I pull out a f***ing chalk. I draw a line around it. And I'm like, there, we marked the bench. There's your early benchmarks. No, but seriously, uh, we're going to have lots of content coming on this card. See you later. I, I distinctly remember that being made. But I'm stunned that we actually released that. That wasn't on April 1st or anything, was it? Oh, no, February 2nd. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolute, absolute it move. Like, I don't... I don't know how. That's rough. I thought I could get away with stuff like that. That's rough. People weren't even mad. <laughs> People are so serious the, now. The, I was going to say, the space was very different. Okay, back then. tell me something. Did they change or did I change? I think a little bit of both. The content's a lot more serious these days. Like the, the especially like content quality. Think about the stuff we were releasing back then. I mean, yeah. I was l taking a GPU and putting it on a bench and drawing a line around it. Like yeah. that was a video apparently. Yeah. That's like, ridiculous. If, if you if you release that now, I think there'd be uproar <laughs> because the, the the average quality is so much higher. <laughs> I don't know. There's uh Yeah. Cuz that wasn't that much longer than unboxing motherboards in a parking lot. Yeah. That I would know. have only been what, like three years? Yeah, something like that. Three, four years later. Yeah. Like <laughs> speaking of that era, um, do you remember the video we did, Intern Search? When we were the Jenga thing? No, 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 no. That was that was actually like hiring for a position. This was before we actually had any money. And we were like, I don't know, are like unpaid interns a thing? We were like Is this when we looked for Ed? No, 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 no. This is, um, this is, Ed was there. So remember, uh, where's my C clamp? You don't oh, remember wait. this at all? I, I'm getting some. I'm vague. in the backyard this was in, in the, my this boxers. Was in the garage. Hold on. All right. Let's just bring it up. Let's just bring it up. <laughs> all right. We're reacting to our own content. This I'm totally okay with. I think there are no ethical problems with reacting to our own content at all. All right. Here this we go. Great. Linus's laptop. Let's go. Let's go. Look at this guy. For some reason, I remember this frame. Um, yeah. I was going for like a super, super... Can they, can they hear this? No, I don't think... No. Oh, oh, I'm muted. Oh. Hold on, there's your problem. No ethical problem. Now they should be able to hear it. Okay. Right. Hopefully it's not too much. Let's go. Let's go. Let's now, why would you Look want to work guy. at Linus Tech Tips? For one thing, we maintain a very positive, respectful um, yeah. working environment. It zooms out in your inner boxes, right? I was going for, like, like, a super, super... Oh, boy, can the they, garage. Can they I'm benching Far Cry, I think, or Crisis, maybe. That makes that makes sense. We also maintain a level of professional. Anywho, um, 
Fun fact, do you remember the person... I remember the video now. No, do you remember the person yes. who like came in twice to basically like hang out with us? I do. Didn't really do any work, uh, which is fine because, yeah, that's unpaid interns are not legal. Yeah. Um, and we never even attempted we to do really anything like that. that again. Yeah, we were... <laughs> Look, we were very desperate. <laughs> it was a desperate time. Um, that person finished their education. Oh, you had the stream audio playing. Oh, oh, sorry, guys. My Rip. bad. Yeah, you can look it up. Uh, yeah, that, that person finished their education and is currently um, interviewing for an engineering position for Creator Warehouse. What? That's actually super cool. Yeah, I I was work from home yesterday because we were shooting at the at the house for um, uh, AMD thirty day challenge, and then I was doing something else there as well. I can't remember. Um, I remember he he came in with a custom keyboard. Yeah, and he had the dust cover. Yeah, so he was yeah. in yeah. interviewing the day that I was shooting the the AMD GPU challenge. I was like, and so Nick messaged me. He's like, yeah, this guy didn't say anything about it until he came in for the interview. But like, do you remember someone by the name of I'm like? Yeah? Like, oh, well, he's in for an interview right now. Do you want to come say hi? I'm like, oh, I wish I was in. I would totally come say hi. That's why I could tell him how useless he was, but how fine that was, because <laughs> we didn't pay him, so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Amazing. That's funny. Amazing. Um, so that's cool. <laughs> uh, why don't we move on? Oh, why don't we do our, let's do our new segment. Yeah. This segment is called Original Sauce. This is cool. Yeah. I like this. And basically, it's just going to be um, finding something that's a, a development in the tech world. Like, we have people reach out to us all the time going, uh, here's something that's happening, or here's someone we think you might like to talk to. Do you want to have this person on the podcast? Do you want to make a video about this? And you know what? The answer is usually no, because they have the personality of um, untoasted toast. That's just bread. Uh, or like it's bread. not really interesting enough for like a full video channel release because we can't just upload BS anymore the way that we apparently used to. <laughs> uh, so original sauce is going to be how we're going to tackle this stuff where we kind of go, okay, yeah, we can definitely set aside the time to have an off the air phone call, figure out if this is worth talking about. And then compile some notes and let the community know about it. Maybe so, every once in a blue moon it's enough that we end up making a dedicated video, but probably not. But probably not. So we're going to the original sauce. And in this case, what we're going to be talking about is Case Labs coming back from the dead. So this was all yeah. compiled by the new WAN show writer who interviewed the new owner of Case Labs, Emil Ritterstedt? Anywho, uh, the new owner of the Case Labs IP. So Case Labs was first founded in 1971 and shut down in 2018, citing high U.S. tariffs on the import of aluminum, a primary component of their builds, uh, which had uh, gone up in price by like 80% or something like that. So they said their prices were just uh, not going to be realistic. They weren't going to be able to compete. Um, Emil is a longtime PC and gaming enthusiast who's been building his own PCs for over 20 years. And until 2021, he was the owner and founder of a consulting company that assisted Swedish researchers in collecting data. In 2017, Emil bought a Case Labs case for one of his builds, a case he loved so much that when the company collapsed in 2018, he reached out to Jim Keating, the former CEO, to discuss acquiring it, a process that was delayed by legal wrangling and the pandemic. Sounds about right. So... This is according to Emil. Um, his approach to reviving the brand is cautiously optimistic, uh, heavy on the caution. Uh, based on the finances of the former Case Labs, he believes that the company was on a consistent upward trajectory with strong fundamentals, but the basic combination of high overhead and an excessively niche market meant that it could not survive the macroeconomic conditions that it faced in 2018. So his hope is they'll be able to restart Case Labs as a boutique uh, custom case producer, but also expand into more general broad appeal products to give them a foundation of revenue while maintaining the quality. The team is currently small and... I would say that this is now me talking. I would say this is going to be a big challenge because yeah. Case Labs' advantage was um, expertise when it came to small run uh, metal fabrication. It's unclear to me exactly what expertise Emil and his team are bringing, uh, but it might not have started with that given Emil's um, 
uh, previous employment. But okay, I, I mean, and because they're not they're not doing the fabrication. Yeah. So the team is currently small, and this was one thing that I had actually asked the writer to to check in about because I have too have a case labs case that I like very much and was sad to discover that I can no longer get replacement parts for, and apparently. That's their plan to start with, is to focus on replacements and parts, ideally by the end of this financial quarter. That seems aggressive. Um, they're going to start <laughs> with high demand items and then expand once consistent sales are established, launch a survey in order to collect more data. So if you're a Case Labs case owner, now might be a good time to get in touch and say, hey, I could really use more drive sleds or something along those lines. They eventually wish to create and design cases and bring fabrication in-house. Um, and the current plan is to partner with an existing manufacturer in Sweden so as to keep overhead low. Ooh, that's questionable. I don't know that low overhead and Sweden necessarily go together very well. <laughs> well, I think in this case because it's local. I guess so. Um, but they also want to maintain a close eye on quality testing. I admire the, I admire the, the will, you know? I admire the spirit here. I think that, you know, resurrecting a beloved brand like Case Labs, for those not familiar, uh, they made highly customizable, very enthusiast-friendly enclosures. I, I, I think that trying to resurrect a brand like that is really cool. Um, but I do question a little bit the... Um, I do think it's going to be extremely challenging. I mean... There's apparently still enough demand for these the style of case that mountain mods still exists. Uh, this is this is surprising to me. Uh, super cool folks over here, from what I can remember. It's been a long time, and who knows? Maybe you know Ben's not there anymore, but um, you know who knows? Maybe maybe they are. Uh, but these guys make kind of a, a similar style of cube case. I don't know who was the original in this style, but man, one of my one of my favorite builds I ever did was in the H2GO. Uh, this is was it? I think it was MATX. Yeah, 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 yeah. It can do full ATX, but I did an MATX build so that I'd have more room for like a cool reservoir beside it or something like that. Yeah, these guys these guys did some cool stuff back in the day, uh, but I just don't know. You know, unless Case Labs sort of reinvents themselves and looks at different form factors or different styles of cases. I don't know that they are going to be able to achieve the kind of volume that would give them the growth that they might need to jumpstart this budding company. I hope they have a lot of runway. And if they don't, um, or rather, and if they do diversify, then I do wonder if they're going to be left with what made them case labs, like if they're going to be left with an identity. Um, Hopefully it works out. I liked Case Labs. I thought they were super cool. It's it's intriguing that they're back, but I don't know if any of the original people are there at all. No, it doesn't sound like it. Yeah. So in that case, it's a brand name with some IP and not the people. And Case Labs was a very people-driven company because you have to be when you're small yep. and doing boutique things. So it's a tough situation. Hopefully it goes well. Yeah. Cyborg Cats asks, uh, this is over on Floatplane Chat, I wonder if LMG would or has ever considered designing their own cases or even pre-builds. Um, cases, yeah, sure, we've talked about it. Uh, I remember I basically designed what would turn into a pretty common small form factor, form fact, uh, small, uh, small form factor case layout later with... Um, uh, my bud, Nate, at uh, who was at Cooler Master at the time, I kind of sat there and looked at one of their designs, and I was like, yeah, but it would be better if it was like this and this and this, and then it could be like almost the size of a PlayStation 4. And then we ended up seeing a bunch of cases that were like that. And then one of the other things I was really passionate about was the idea of building gaming cases that are designed for rack mount. And then, um, oh, crap, what's the company that does a really, really good job of those uh, now I don't remember, but you worked with them for a bit, didn't you? Uh, they sent over uh, Sliger. Uh, wait, yes, yeah, that Sliger. Sliger exists, about. and they seem to be doing a great job of those style of case. So for me, I would have to find something that nobody else is doing that I feel like the market needs, and it's just never really happened. At least not at the right time with us having the right resources in order to bring something like that to life. As for pre-builds. I mean, I raised all of my concerns about the pre-built PC business when we reviewed the uh, Starforge system that we did a little while back. I'll never say never, but 
it's a tough business. Very tough business. Speaking of cases, let's talk about the challenge updates. Yeah, sure. Should we start with ARC? You really want to? Oh, yeah, sure. I've got some things to say. That's why I really want to talk about it. I've got one thing to say. Uh, I would like to apologize to everyone for my unprofessionalism in the ARC Part 3 video, Part 2 and a Half. You took your card out early? Whatever it was. Uh, no, no, not that at all. Oh. I didn't realize that I do this, but I was apparently mouthing along to the script while you were talking. <laughs> so we tried a really different format for that video. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, A Prime messaged me. He's like, yo, uh, can you not do that? Like, I had no idea I was doing that. It's kind of, it's like feeding a baby. Like, <laughs> <you know? laughs> These are the words. Please say them. Totally subconscious. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, we took a bit of a different approach to that video because what I wanted was for it to have kind of a conversational format, but I also wanted it to have the structure of, of a hosted, written, delivered video so that it would be nice and tight and to the point. Want it to be genuine and conversational, but not WAN show. Yes, but have a bit of like a WAN show vibe. And, and people picked it up. But one of the side effects was that, yes, it was nearly fully scripted. We ad-libbed a little bit just to kind of you know, keep the energy up so that it wasn't just taking turns. Yeah, 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 yeah. Reading. That was, that was your line, but anyway. <laughs> if I'd mouthed it, maybe yeah, you would have picked say, it up. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I, was, I was actually, I was, really, I, I was really proud of it. Like, with notes from Luke, I wrote the vast majority of it for both of our parts, trying to kind of you know, get his voice and also make sure that I was including all of his points. Um, but, but keeping the, the structure of the video as tight as a fully scripted video. Uh, but I screwed up <laughs> and I'm sitting, sitting there <laughs> reading the script along with you when I'm supposed to be just, you know, supposedly listening to new words I've never seen or heard of before uh, that are coming out of you and paying attention. <laughs> Anywho, uh, what had you wanted to oh, say about it? Oh, you are doing it. <laughs> I don't think I would have noticed if no one mentioned it. And I bet you that's going to be true for a bunch of people. So now, like, tons of people are going to watch this and just see you. Because it's not like, you're not, like, fully enunciating. But it is moving a little bit. Do you want to just show the people? Sure. I might need my new screen. Let's see. You can see it. It's minor, but you can see it. No, I'll go full screen. One sec. Cringe. Here, I think I gotta go back. Wait, wait, wait. There. <laughs> you can see it. Yeah, no, It's minor. No, no, it's no, minor, no. but he's doing it. Oh. Right after this, if I remember correctly. Yep, right here. Oh, do, do, hold do. on, hold on, hold on. Okay, one second. Yeah, I gotta go back. Yeah, go back, go back. Knit, knit, this knit, knit. 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 <laughs> Nit, 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 nit. Ah. <laughs> it's really, it's really minor. That's funny. <laughs> worst, the worst thing ever. A bunch of people in chat, yeah, can confirm, didn't see it initially. Yeah. yeah, I think most people wouldn't have noticed. I want this to be very clear. Just because something is scripted doesn't mean it's not our genuine thoughts. I took all the notes yeah. that Luke provided me. I took all of my notes. It's just a way to, and this is something you've definitely heard me talk about, even if not the every YouTube video is a reaction video, you know, talk. I give a lot of talks during like script reviews and, and meetings with the writers, uh, but you've definitely heard me give the, the, the don't waste the audience's time talk. Like density, 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 yeah, we density. Were, we were gonna script it. It, it like it should have been scripted, but yeah. we were just trying to as a conclusion video to something like this. It makes sense for it to be more conversational. Yes, but it also needed to be scripted. And so, so what was, I thought about yeah. was just having like headers, and then points that we wanted to make sure we hit, but that wouldn't have achieved the density that it's I wanted. Turn into something that's way too long because you don't know when to end it. Well, I do. It had to be scripted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're I can, there's you're certain good, you're things. Good. There's certain. If you you're wanna, not the reason when shows three and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> if you want proof of this, go. You're gonna have to dig, but go back and find the Oculus gets bought out by Facebook when show. <laughs> I think I think I talked about that for literally like an hour. I mean, you ended up being right about basically everything, which was kind of which is neat. Sad, but well, yeah. <laughs> 
I got so much flack too. People oh. hated me for it because they were like, "No, like they said this wasn't going to happen." I'm like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." Yeah, com- this is like common Luke W. How things go. I've been calling AI stuff very accurately. I know, right? Like very accurate. Yeah, like <laughs> even when I'm like, I don't know, I'm probably wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's going to go exactly this way, and then it totally does. Op- Open AI announcing the G- GPT Chat Premium was like. Whoa. Like the day after he's like, yeah, it'll be like that. Or I really hope it's like that on WAN shows. Like, like professional. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's yeah, you, you you got it. Okay. You know what's up. So is there anything else to say about the arc? Nope. No. Nope. I don't really have anything else to say either. Yeah. No, I mean, it. I kind of, I mean, that's the point of scripting it is that I was, I was able to sit there for four hours, yeah. take everything and put it into a nice little package. The most interesting thing to me was that we both had the reaction that after week like two, two. or three yep. we just sort of forgot about it <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah that was that was very interesting to me but yeah okay new one amd challenge radeon challenge my computer card? was fully bricked after swapping but not because of amd maybe I believe that my BIOS was corrupted. Oh. And it took a total of between Jake and me probably about three and a half hours of troubleshooting to get my system back to a bootable state. Whoa. And there were some compromises. Oh. Wow. Were you were you planning to top that? Uh maybe. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, so there's going to be some spoilers here, guys. If you don't like spoilers, but realistically, you're watching WAN Show, you love spoilers. Uh, we, well, we do have the AMD Radeon Challenge coming. Yeah. We, uh, I, Luke, and we added Jake this time, all upgraded to the Radeon 7900 XTX, which actually I think for all of us is a substantial pretty performance upgrade. massive upgrade. I mean, I went from a 3090, which is a pretty darn good card, but I'll tell you, Playing Halo Infinite, 7900 mm, yeah, it's fast. I think I'll feel it She's fast. quite a bit because I went from Titan RTX, oh, which yeah. is still cooking. It's a good card. Totally solid. But, you know, I'm not maxing the capability of my monitor in every game that I'm playing. No, you're not. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, <laughs> first thing, you open the box and just, whoa, this thing is enormous. Um, I've never had a card that I was putting in my own system that came with a stand. <laughs> uh, he didn't get a reference card, by the way. <laughs> oh, you got a reference card? Uh, well, someone ended up with a reference card. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Um, it didn't fit. It's nice. not in my system. Oh. It doesn't fit. Cool. <laughs> So someone had the infinite wisdom to like force me to upgrade to water cooling uh, because he knows that I don't like it. So he gave me a water cooling required motherboard. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. That was cool. That's a good motherboard. It is? Yeah, the ASRock uh, X570 Aqua. I came up with a joke before the show, and I wasn't sure if I was going to say it or not, but I think I'm going to say it. My, my joke was it's like giving Greta Thunberg a Bugatti. <laughs> Because it's really nice, but I don't want it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it didn't fit. And the reason why it doesn't fit is because the reservoir is sitting right there. Yeah. And the case is pretty small, so there's, like, not really another no. place to put the reservoir. Nice. So I, like, actually don't know what to do. I'll figure something out. I'm going to figure it out this weekend. But, yeah. like, I don't know. So wait, you 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 are not gaming on it? No. Yet. Ah. It's not in there. All right. I, I, I have to redo the whole water cooling loop. Nice. Or something. For an air-cooled know. card. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So like... Nice. I don't know. Because like... I hole, man. <laughs> we used one pre-existing hole, and then we drilled another hole for mounting the reservoir. Yeah. So there's potential that I just crank it to the roof... And the reservoir like touches the top of the case. Cool. And maybe it clears that way. But then there's a tubing run that's like really tight 
that goes right across there. The best part is the GPU is not a gift. So he has to go back to his RTX Titan after. So it's not like he can just, you know, take it out of the loop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. PCI riser and prop the card upside the case outside the case. Oh. That's horrible. Spoiler alert, you might see some other solutions kind of like that. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness <sighs> I would really love to not redo my water cooling loop so if I can find any other solution I'm pretty much down nice um, yeah why don't we talk about CNET? Yeah. Actually, why don't we talk real quick about what merch messages are? Those of you who are new to the show will be seeing these little merch, merch messages down here. People with their little messages popping up, or uh, there's probably some that are curated already. Maybe we'll do a couple of the curated ones. Dan, our producer, can read those out for us up, Dan. Um, we can't turn his camera on today because he's not wearing LTTstore.com merchandise. Look, what is this, a knock to a hoodie? What? what? No. Yeah, but I mean, I I'm sure it's a, of those. I'm sure it's sad. a quality hoodie, but geez, man, you got to rep them. It's not as nice as the LTT hoodies. Don't lie. I know it's really nice. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the point is, if you want to uh, get our producer, Dan, to check out your question, maybe curate it for us to address on the show, or if you just want to see it slide on into our lower third here, uh, the way to do it is to go into lttstore.com, and you can pick up a gift card. You can pick up some comfy underwear, hoodies. We got all kinds of great stuff over there. And then in the checkout, you'll see a little field marked merch messages and you can put your message in and it'll go into our little processing queue here. Uh, the reason that we do it this way is that compared to super chats on YouTube, we are more likely to actually see them. So if you head over here, uh, oh, okay, nobody's actually sent any, or maybe they have. Who knows? Because, oh, yeah, okay, oh, look Oi. at that. It didn't show up here, but, oh, okay, sure, why not? Apparently, that's how this works now. You know what? Oh, it did manage to populate the old ones. Maybe YouTube finally saw my it? thing. Yeah. Either way, if hmm. you really want to throw money at Super Chats, you absolutely can, but um, YouTube takes a big chunk of that instead of it all going to creators and effectively you, because... With merch messages, we are still getting a significant cut of what you send, uh, but you are essentially taking the rest, which is the value of the product, and getting it back to yourself in the form of something that you can enjoy. If you really want to throw money at the screen, you can just buy a gift card and then never use it on lttstore.com. Not that I would recommend that. I don't think you should just throw money away, which is uh, why we do merch messages instead of super chats. And I've had a lot of people ask me, okay, Linus, Mr. Merch Messages are better than Twitch bits or Super Chats. Why do you leave Super Chats on then? Well, if people really want to throw money at the screen, like what, I'm going to stop them? There's no obligation that we're going to respond. Yeah, I could tell them not to. I can tell them I'm not going to look at it. But like, and we we, we, we it say shows it, it to other chat users as well. Yeah, exactly. So if that's their reason, then go ahead. Yeah, so if they really want to do it, then like, cool. But um, yeah, you should you should do Merch Messages. They're, they're it's, a, it's a better option. Yeah. Cool. Why don't we do a couple? Dan, hit me. Okay, this one's from Michael. The first annual Chiplet Summit concluded this week, and I'd like to know, do you believe chiplets will be the future of computers, or is it just a patch until better technologies can continue the trend of die aggregation? So future. That's... Future. I think you mean the present. Yeah. Um, yeah, chiplets are, are well and truly arrived at this point. I mean, man, I saw some I saw some new like research paper stuff coming out around like two two dimensional something or other, some some new kind of transistor. And I'm like, oh uh, Moore's Law is coming back. And like, I don't know. Yeah, man, sure. If that if that plays out, then then great. I'm sure that manufacturers would rather create monolithic dies rather than work on these super complicated interconnects that are necessitated by chiplet designs. But that has that's not commercially ready yet and even if the researchers think it is there's a huge gulf between researchers thinking something is commercially ready i mean how many times have we have we seen researchers talking about how how soon solid state batteries are coming or graphene or you know whatever else it is and then real actual manufacturers of products going like y you guys have not considered many of these things that are real <laughs> problems in the real world um so yeah, I, I think that I think that chip manufacturers would rather create monolithic dies, but if that's not an option, then yeah, we're just going to have to um, we're just going to have to rely on these on these high speed interconnects that 
are getting pretty sophisticated working at this very point. well yeah yeah so i'm i'm excited for more 3d stacking obviously but i don't think that 3d stacking is going to deliver even though it'll help with density I don't think it's going to deliver the kinds of, of cost advantages that consumers have enjoyed for the last 20, 30, well, like 40 years, basically, as long as, as, as microprocessors have, been, have, have existed. Because um, it's, it's just not as cost effective as just as, as shrinking the distance between the transistors. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think chiplets, because they help improve yields, because they help optimize cost, like we saw this recently on Radeon 7000 series, where... Uh, oh man, I'm going to get the names wrong because it's the kind of thing that I look at in script review, verify, read out in the video, and then I don't need to think about anymore. But uh, I think it's the cache and memory die that uh, is on 6 nanometer, and then it's the compute die that is uh, 5 nanometer TSMC or whatever it is. Um, because what they found was that TSMC's 5 nanometer process doesn't really shrink cache and memory very much, so they were able to save some money, uh, which... I mean, kind of made its way to the end product. I mean, it's relatively affordable compared to NVIDIA's products. So it's it's now. It's the now. And barring some kind of miraculous innovation, it's it's the future, too. It's been the now for a bit, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, AMD really led the way in terms of proving that chiplets could be competitive with monolithic solutions. Next. Yo, Dan, what's up? Oh, oh sorry. One more. Responding Maybe some two more. more. Merch messages. Let's get rid yeah, we'll do of more that towards one. the end of the show, guys. It ends up being kind of Q&A. People give us, people kind of tee us up topics to talk about and stuff like that. Okay, this is a YouTube-focused one. Uh, this is from Adam. Hey, Linus, I'm a truck driver and download basically all my YouTube content with premium. Does my view time count to YouTube analytics? 100%. So do, does, with one download, you get... A 100% watched. I believe... Ooh, ooh, shoot. I have... I have heard that discussed. I don't remember the answer. Um, I don't think so. Don't quote me on it. Um, Maybe it, like, averages... Yeah, it doesn't do that. Other, no? It either is like Netflix, where you come back online and it updates your viewer st your, your view stats, right? Or it's 100%. I can't remember which. A premium download. Yeah. Does that like download to device and you have to use the app to watch it? Correct. Oh, okay. So it, it, pro it, it prob probably does that. It probably pays attention to how you actually watched yeah, it. Yeah, that would be very uh, logical. But, and but yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of confusion among viewers about you know how premium actually contributes to creators. It's, it's hugely beneficial to creators, by the way. And this is even coming from someone who has their own video platform where they would rather you go subscribe, flowplane.com. Um, pre premium is great for creators and great for the sustainability of the platform overall because, well, it's a lot more money than you can generate with an ad with an ad supported view, I can tell you that much. Um, and that even ignores the impact of, of ad blocking, for example, even if absolutely nobody was using ad blocking on YouTube, paid subscribers at the rates that premium charges, even, even not in the, the, the highest, um, like the highest YouTube premium cost countries is, is so much, so much more than ads. Apparently spiffing Brit said that you get 100% wash time. Oh, that sounds download. like the kind of thing spiffing Brit would look into. So uh, that may not be true forever, though. So I don't know. Maybe or it's it might true have now. been true for the like account that he used, or maybe he did watch it locally or something. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. But the point is that the way that the watch time gets calculated is generally smarter than I think people give YouTube credit for. Mm. Uh, for example, if you watch it two x speed, that it fully counts. It doesn't count as half the time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's by how much of that video timeline you consumed. Okay, one more and then move on? Yeah. One oh, more. Oh, we didn't even talk about, you know, cool new stuff on LTT Store that people could, like, get with the thing. So we've got new patterns for our, uh, for our boxers and... Oh, we covered it. Uh, we've got a new product. The GPU plushie is here. You've seen the CPU plushie. Mm -hmm. Now we've got the GPU plushie. Here, I mean, there's no point showing the product page when we can just show what it looks like. That's right. There's your I.O. There's your backside. Show us your backside, Luke. Show us your backside again. Oh, beautiful. Oh, love it. 
Got it. And there's some fans, I think. Got some fans on there. Oh, yeah, there's the fans. Basically, it's just a cute little decorative plushie. Yeah, don't overthink it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more merch message, then we'll move on to our next topic. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. One more merch message. Okay, this is from Liz. Hi, Linus and Luke. I got a promotion at work. Yay! And nice. Yay! Oh, it's a completely new department, though. Oh, Any crazy. tips on what you would be looking for in a new team member without much experience? <laughs> That doesn't sound like a good promotion. <laughs> wow, are you sure you didn't just get like good uh, luck thrown to the wolves? Yeah, this is interesting. You know what's re- without much experience. Wow. You know what's really funny? This really depends on the role. Go for it. Does this remind you of anything that ever happened? <laughs> are we going there? Are we wait for what? Like the recent thing? No. I don't know. I feel like this has happened to me multiple times. So I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if you're talking about that. Are you sure that you weren't just, like, impossible to deal with in your current position? <laughs> Still valid. <laughs> mine, and, uh, mine and Luke's relationship has been often complicated by my role as his boss. Uh, on the one hand, I think we're friends, you know? It, 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 like, like, really, though... But on the other hand, um, at one point in time, <laughs> I was his friend, his landlord, his employer, and I think there was technically like one other thing. Um, what could it have been? All at once. Yeah. Um, love. No, no. Hold on. We, uh, sorry. No. We're not uh, talking about that one. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so our relationship has at times been really complicated. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I mean, if he fires me, he doesn't get rent. Squatting in his house, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, anywho, um, there there was there was a period where um, our work relationship was pretty challenging, and um, Luke got a um, promotion. Promotion. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Why don't I let you talk about it? Uh, it was it was difficult on both sides. I was a bit of a shithead um and there was also some other things going on i'm not going to put all of the blame on me i think a lot of it can go there though um, i own some yeah 100 percent. yeah things happen i had a lot going on too um uh, and then and then i started doing float plane <laughs> <laughs> and it came with a a, a big be- a better title so it was a promotion in that sense not really Oh, that's right. You had that title at Linus Media Group that probably didn't. I it, mean, to be, yeah. To be fair, it was kind of fake, and then it was kind of real. So that's that's better. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that <laughs> fake BS title. Anywho, that um, part was an improvement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, are you sure it wasn't that? <laughs> I think it depends a lot. So they say, any tips on what you do for a new team member without much experience? said promotion so are you joining as a team member are you no, leading this team no they're leading a completely new department i think it's basically what <laughs> what i was doing yeah um so luke went from being part of video production at linus media group to being the leader of float plane yeah yeah and Floatplane's sick now though you know what yeah yeah i was gonna say that what's cool is that it this actually was, like super worked this was it it was i think i in, I think I softened it a lot. I think probably no. uh, you have a different memory of how certain things went at that time than are like actually real. And I have receipts for a lot of it. Did I say mom spaghetti? Uh, what? Because I'm pretty sure I said mom spaghetti at some point. Probably one shot, one opportunity. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so then I was pretty upfront then, I guess. Yeah. About what this was like. Okay, build something. Yeah fucking did it so there you go i think honestly the role change did actually solve a lot of the problems that like i was having with things i wasn't sure me neither like this was it was worth biting yeah i don't know i'm really happy with uh with the team that we have that's the main thing i'm happy with um yeah float plane like existing and working seems like a fever dream like the fact that that even happened at all is like kind of wild and then we do tons of other stuff at this point now yeah that's Um, like very impactful on the business on yvonne umbrella corporation like i just talked to uh someone from the inventory team about like how 
cool the inventory system is. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say their names. One of them I'm 100% certain I can say. The other one I'm 98, but I think it's okay. Peter and Tyler do a lot of the work yep. on the inventory system, and they launched something recently that was, like, super cool. Um, like, we, we do a bunch of infrastructure stuff, not just in Floatplane. Uh, under the umbrella includes the lab's web development team who are killing yep. it. Under the umbrella includes Conrad. Department Yay, of One, Conrad. He's killing it. Uh, like uh, yeah. the the, it's, yeah. AJ said going on almost six years now. Yeah, we've been going yeah. for a long time. The yeah. team's actually like big for a project that so many people called doomed and continue to call a failure. It's going pretty strong. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I'm. It's I'm like, hey, quite AJ, happy with it. the 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 checks like they clear right. <laughs> Like, I, I, six years later, st- still still, uh, still toiling away at this failure of a project. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It is what it is. It worked out. Um, if, if you're leading it... Um, yeah, I mean, so then, fine. You, you did it. Maybe they're, maybe they're being thrown to the wolves. <laughs> it's a sink or swim moment, which is part of the name of Floatplane. Um, yeah. yeah, maybe you, okay. What did you, how did you build the team? I don't know, dude. Um, <laughs> find an AJ and a Yuki as fast as you can. If they're not named that, you're doomed. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it sounds like the team might already exist. If that's the case, there's going to be a lot of eyes on you. Um, and I think you specifically said without much experience, it sounds like that might mean that you're lacking confidence here. Try to step into the situation without the lack in confidence, but try to step into the situation with humility at the same time. Ask the team what they need, uh, what type of things they think you should move forward on, and educate yourself very rapidly. You've been very kind about it. I totally misread it. Yeah, so they're joining a completely new department, and they want yeah, to be... it sounds be, like they might be a junior member. Yeah, they want to be what that department is looking for. Enthusiasm. Yes. Ask lots of questions. Don't, and don't be afraid to ask questions, but take notes. This might be don't very ask the same question again. Counter current culture, but you might want to put some work in outside of hours to like familiarize. I know, I know, I know. But they're they're asking for for tips. And if if you're looking to if you're looking to impress a new department, yeah, be growing and be growing rapidly. And if if you can do that within hours, great. Like I'm not. You don't have to do this, but. If you're feeling the burn when it's outside yeah. of work, you might be able to make your day better by just prepping a little bit more. The The whole without much experience thing, I keep coming back to that. Um, don't try too hard. Be yourself. Pff, I hate that advice. Um, <laughs> I, I, sorry. You gave me a hard time about dunking on float plane I'm subscribers. Sorry. Okay, I'll explain why, okay, though. Jay Citroen, we, approve, we, 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 we like you still. You're still yes, cool. Yes. Stay subscribed. And, and the be yourself part. Absolutely, yeah. I'm not. I'm not telling you to be any different. But yeah, the like socially, but the yourself. don't try too hard thing. Uh, yeah, don't push yourself to the point where you're oh. exhausting yourself too much. No, I think you misread this. Did I? Yeah, I think it's like don't try too hard. Like be yourself. Like ah! you like don't laugh too hard. You know. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, then unless yeah, you're that's awful, fair enough. <laughs> then be someone else. What I I'm specifically <laughs> talking about effort level. Sure. D- don't. I wouldn't try too hard to necessarily fit. Uh, like I wouldn't focus too much on being able to sit around the lunch table yeah, without it being awkward. I would focus hard on being a valuable member of the team. Yeah, for sure. Because if you're a valuable member of the team, people apparently, will want to talk to you. Apparently you were right. They said thanks. Okay, cool. Uh, if you're a valuable member of the team, it's about to get one right. even if you don't socially fit in super well, people yeah. are going to like that you're yeah, on the team. You'll still be respected even yeah. if you're not like people's bff right and usually if you're respected because you're a valuable member of the team that'll just kind of happen with time uh k chirp this is this is pretty good this is a pretty good way of kind of summarizing i think what you um did a good job of oculusing about there uh, <laughs> no great boss ever asks his team to consistently put in work after hours but mm-hmm. they sure do notice it yes that's a really that's a really good way of so a short-term it. burst at the beginning yeah. to get yourself uh, maybe not up to speed, but at least closer. Show so, show some effort is never yes. a bad idea. Like I was really impressed when um, you don't James, want to be doing this long term. Uh, James, who didn't have a ton of tech knowledge coming in here compared to some of the other writers that we hired, Anthony, Alex, Jake, 
at that time, right? Like these, these are highly technical people who just like did tech things for fun, for lulls, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so James coming in, I was really impressed when he asked um, for funding to buy this like textbook about display technology. And I was like, it was like 200 or $300 or something like that. I was like, okay, I'm not buying this if you're not going to read it. But if you're actually going to read it, and he did, then yeah, sure. Yeah, like, of course. And he's like, yeah. I, and he's like, yeah, I read the whole thing on my own time. Like, because the reality of it is that what you do during work time is work, but what you do outside of work time, you could almost think of as like qualifications. Yeah. yeah. Like you wouldn't have been, you, you were kind of hired based on having a go-getter kind of attitude. So yeah, I mean, by all means, yeah, I didn't ask him to. And you don't, you don't want to do this long term no really, it's not sustainable you're, you're gonna burn out really hard you gotta have a life it's gonna be bad for you and it's gonna be bad for your employer to a certain degree because if when you're burnt out and you're showing up to work it's, it's this is a line i know you've out. heard you're no good to me dead yeah yeah <laughs> heard that one a few times <laughs> uh <laughs> if i see someone going too hard that's that's what i always default to like hey yeah. look you're no good to me dead like yeah you're like you're, you're a warm you're, body but you're not here right yeah. Yeah, you're better showing up and doing the work than showing up and doing the work too hard and then burning out and disappearing and doing that cycle a bunch of times. So put in put in a little bit of extra effort at the beginning to get a little bit of a boost on that experience. Yeah. Uh, might be a decent idea or not. Depends. You're going to have to vibe this out a little bit. It might be a decent idea to kind of ask the team for some resources for things that you can catch up on. Um, depending on the vibe, though, they might use that as ammo against you. So it might be a good idea to find the resources yourself and try to catch up as best you can. It just depends on the type of people you're dealing with. All right. Uh, Why don't we move into our next big topic here? Perfectly good two-year-old MacBooks are getting scrapped because of activation lock, while new Pro Models SSD is found to be worse than the predecessor. Ooh, some bad news for Apple this week. Last week, computer repair store owner John Bumstead claimed that shops like his are being flooded with MacBooks that cannot be refurbished or resold thanks to Apple's activation lock feature, leaving no option but to sell them for parts or, more likely, for scrap. The feature, which comes on Macs with the T2 security chip introduced in 2018, allows the user to encrypt their data so that only the user can access it using Touch ID. The problem is that nothing, even a factory reset, can disable the lock unless the original owner turned off Find My or used the Erase Assistant prior to turning the laptop in. Bumstead says that previous owners are rarely responsive, being in large part companies and schools that are upgrading hundreds or thousands of machines, and while he's heard of ways to bypass the T2 lock, those methods don't survive a reset which would screw over whoever buys the resold device. (sighs) <sighs> As Apple Insider points out, Apple does have a process for removing activation lock from used devices, provided that eBay or whatever gave you a receipt, but the method doesn't work if the previous owner hasn't removed the device from their account. Bumstead wants that fixed, like this. Oh, I have a link here, apparently. Ah, cool. So here's a, here's a solution that is proposed. Um, when we come upon a locked machine that was legally acquired, we should be able to log into our Apple account, enter the serial and any given information, then click a button and submit the machine to Apple for unlocking. Then Apple could explore its records, query the original owner if it really wants to, and then if at the end of the day there are no red flags, the original owner and the original owner doesn't protest within 30 days, the device should be auto-unlocked. It's Uh, like never going to fly if it has to go through Apple. Absolutely never going to fly if it has to go through Apple. And even if it didn't have to go through Apple, like one of the things that I pitched to our writer before even looking at um, John Bumstead's ideas was, you know how, uh, okay, no, you probably don't, but okay, Dan, you know how when you're logging in on an Apple device, it's pretty common for a two-factor code to just kind of pop up on your other Apple device that's logged into the same account? Yeah, we had that uh, a lot the other day. Yeah, I get that a lot on our teleprompter, which is really annoying. Anytime Mac address is off-site shooting somewhere, and it's like, hey, you're logging in from an unusual location. <laughs> I am trying to read the script! <laughs> uh, anywho. Um, you know, I think that it would be pretty chill if the device is still in my account, if someone else had it and was like, hey, requesting an unlock, I could see Apple selling that as a feature. Hey, for that previous owner or potential theft victim, um, 
here's the current whereabouts of your machine. Did you uh, like know about this? That could be pretty useful. And for the recent acquirer of said machine, it would be great to be able to send a ping to the previous owner that's like, hey, I bought this. Um, <laughs> it's still in your account. Can, can I use it? That would be great. However, that also assumes that everyone would kind of act in good faith in this yeah, situation. Yeah, I was going to say fair play here is going to be an issue. Which could, which could be a big problem. And I could see Apple getting stuck as like kind of like a, an arbiter of, of, of these kinds of disputes, they, which they're not going to want to do. They won't do it, yeah. And so. I think they're going to make privacy arguments about, you know, locations of devices being passed to, to new owners and things like that. Uh, but bottom line is we gotta, we got to have some kind of solution, right? And if this other news is anything to go by, the new solution is not to simply just upgrade to the newest MacBook. In somewhat related news, the SSD in Apple's newest entry-level 14-inch MacBook Pro, so this is uh, with the M2 Pro processor, 512 gigs of storage, it is significantly slower than its predecessor in the 2021 14-inch MacBook Pro, so with the M1 processor and 512 gigs of storage. Uh, though confirmed by multiple reports, evidence was first shared by Daniel of YouTube channel Zone of Tech, who clocked the 2023 model's SSD at just shy of 3 gigabytes a second write and 2,700 megabytes a second of reads, and that is, wow, half a gig and over a gig slower, respectively, than the 2021 model. <laughs> he big. guessed uh, correctly that Apple is apparently pulling the same thing that they did back in June, replacing the dual NAND chip configuration in the M1 model with a single chip. And this was confirmed by YouTuber Max Tech and 9to5Mac. Uh, Tom's Hardware further notes that the new M2 Mac Mini features similar SSD performance degradation compared to the M1 Mac Mini from 2020, confirmed by Twitter user at Tablerone uh, and YouTuber Brandon Geekabit. I mean, the new one comes in $100 less than the original MSRP, but, like, what is what is the deal with this? It's kind of whack. Like, really? Not a fan. I wonder if it's... I wonder if it's, like, the YouTube quality thing. In what way? I wonder if they, like, know people don't care. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, it's just it just sucks, though, right? Like, oh, as absolutely. a consumer, if I buy M2... Is it not a fair assumption that it is better in every way than M1? Just as good or faster, yeah. I mean, there are certain situations where, sure, I can, I can see some justification for this. Okay, so say, for example, an electric car. If you go with a top performance spec, um, it might have less range. But there's a, there's, a, there's a logical reason for that. If I get an M2 processor, theoretically, I would expect it to have a better storage controller. Like, it shouldn't... Like, go, that that's not that the only thing you could reasonably really assume is that maybe the battery dies faster. Sure. Yeah, yeah maybe it has in, slightly, in the same kind of it exactly concept. exactly yeah. the same sort of trade off. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's pretty clear that Apple is taking a you know, whatever, these plebs won't notice approach. Yeah. Um, you know, realistically it's less about the hardware and it's more about the experience. It's more about the ecosystem. And it's just it's frustrating. And the thing is like I'm not the one who should be mad about this. Yeah. Apple users are the ones who should be mad. And yet it feels like Apple's users are the ones most likely to just take it. Not really care. Over and over and over and over again. And I don't understand it. Which is probably why they're doing it. I don't know. I, I really suspect it's the... Man, speaking of which, I've brought up the YouTube quality a few things. YouTube quality thing a few times today because it's plaguing me. It will refuse to play any video that I open at anything other than the lowest possible quality. Nice. And I have to change it every single time. Nice. There's no learning happening because I do it every single time. Nice. And out of spite, I put it on the maximum possible nice. one. Despite that, like, I don't need that necessarily. I'm usually yeah. playing it in a small window on a side monitor. Yeah. I don't care. But no, now it's going full. Take that, Screw Google. you, man. Take that. I'm so annoyed. I have a feeling that, like, because I'll leave open, like, uh, say, the lo-fi thing or whatever. Sure. Because I'll, like, just listen to music or it's on my speaker so the birds will hear it or whatever. I 
I pay for premium, but boy, I use it. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm like wondering if they're like, oh, it's he's using too much. Let's make him use less or something. I don't know. But wow, that's annoying. I don't know. Going back to the uh, the locks on the on the MacBooks, like, mm. and then there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of try to tackle this, right? Like, obviously, if you just had removable SSDs that are not tied to the T2 chip, that would address the refurbishing the issue. The main issue is data privacy, right? But that wouldn't. Well, no, the other main issue is device ownership, right? Like we talked just last week no, yeah, about right. the you're benefits right. of encrypting devices. This reduces the value in stealing one. Exactly, it makes them worth so much less for a thief. And so it's not like I don't understand the benefits of doing it this way, but there has to be a way to tackle it, right? So one of the one of the ideas here was uh, from Jamamp, uh, have students or parents, you know, sign that they agree to pay for locked laptops that are returned. Oh my God. You know, instead of shifting the blame to Apple, shift the blame to the users who are not unlocking these bloody things. Yeah, like it was said that uh, if it's like, Last week, com computer repair shop owner claimed that shops like his are being flooded with MacBooks that cannot be refurbished. Well, they're coming to you directly, it sounds like. So just try to get them to do it at the door. Obviously, if it's a school, the delivery person might just be like, I don't know, and just leave them. But, like, some effort should be done there, I think. There, there's got, there has got to be a way to do this. And if Apple actually cared about the environment, the way that they posture that they do, then they would solve it. Like, let's, let's be real here. Their R&D budget has enough room in it. If they were legitimately motivated to deal with this problem, that they could find a solution. And it's one of those things where I, I realize I'm coming in here just kind of going, yeah, here's a problem. Uh, see you later. Like, I, I, don't, I don't have the perfect solution. But I also sh am not the one who should have to. Like, I'm not the one who is manufacturing mountains of e-waste that do not need to be shredded. I'm not the one saying, oh, I just care so huggy-muggy much about the environment that we are. I make the greenest devices ever. That's you. <laughs> That's you. That's you're, you're the one doing that. It's Apple's hypocrisy that bothers me so much about them. I saw, I saw a comment on, um, on a Floatplane exclusive recently that was uh, Jonathan Horst reacting to something or other from Apple, uh, like their new announcement of something. And it was like, you know, you've corrupted him. The longer he works there, the more he sounds like a like a cynical, like non Mac person. Uh, I'll I'll tell you something about Jonathan Horst. So he was hired because he is analytical and maybe a little cynical, um, but still loves Apple. That was exactly that was exactly who we were looking for for a role like that because we didn't want to be like every other Apple channel where we just go, oh yes, yes, please, please, just ah, put it in my mouth, ah, do it, do it, do it, do it, <laughs> right? Like we wanted to. We wanted to love Apple, but not in like a super submissive kind of way. We're sure. not talking Fifty Shades here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're talking like a healthy relationship. Fifty Shades of Space Gray. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Thanks. Best line of the WAN show right there. I'm going to try to top that, but I'm a fail. <laughs> uh, anywho... Um, Right off of that, should we go into sponsors? Yeah, let's go into sponsors. Uh, the show is brought to you today by Kudos. Kudos is a free smart wallet that not only helps you get the most cash back out of your credit cards, but also unlocks every little hidden benefit as well. It's super easy to use. You just shop like normal, and at checkout, Kudos will automatically suggest the best card that will earn you the most rewards for your purchase. That's actually super cool. So imagine, uh, this is a new sponsor. I, I've never heard of them before. <laughs> Imagine you're shopping online for a last minute birthday present. Uh, you go to check out, but wait, should I use my Chase Freedom Flex or maybe my Amex Gold? Kudos will help you solve this problem on over 1 million merchants, including Amazon, Target, Best Buy, and more. And don't worry about your card security. Kudos uses the most up-to-date industry protocols for storing your data and ensures your info belongs to you and you only. I will never say without an asterisk, don't worry about your card security. I mean, always worry about your card security, but hey, kudos says that they're doing this, which is which is good, which is all we'll really get from anyone. So, yep, I guess. Um, so stop leaving money on the table. In fact, the average kudos user unlocks over seven hundred fifty dollars a year. Yeah, it can even be stuff that's as simple as like, yeah, when you buy this category of goods, uh, your percentage of cash back is higher, and little, little details like that that I don't have the patience for. But Yvonne's yeah, always not. like harping on me about. Um, 
Yeah, imagine all the LTT merch you could get for that amount of money. Hey, love that. Good talking points, kudos. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> Visit joinkudos.com slash when and sign up for free today. That's pretty pro. Uh, the show is also brought to you by Ridge. Reduce your pocket clutter with our sponsor, The Ridge. Tired of bulk weighing down your pants? I'm certainly not. <laughs> Anywho, uh, taking too long to look for a card at the grocery store? No worries. The Ridge wallet is the solution to your problems. It's simple yet elegant. It holds up to 12 cards and still has room for cash with a money clip or elastic band. Its low profile means that the Ridge wallet fits in most pockets and bag compartments, and there's no need to worry about durability or theft. The Ridge wallet is made with premium RFID blocking materials that even offer a lifetime warranty. With over 30 colors and styles to choose from, the Ridge wallet will have a design just for you. They've got over 50,000 satisfied customers recommending the Ridge Wallet, making it the perfect gift for your friend or loved one, or even a nice treat for yourself. Still on the fence? Try it out. The team at the Ridge is so confident you'll love it, they offer a 45-day test drive period. If you're unsatisfied, simply send it back. So don't wait. Check out their wallet and the other products the Ridge has to offer uh, and use code LINUS at checkout. Ooh, that's not down there. Well, anyway, it's in the description. Uh, use LINUS at checkout and you can get free worldwide shipping and 10% off your purchase. Finally, the show is brought to you by Seasonic. They make power supplies. They go on computers. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. 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 Seasonic. Yeah. 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 Are you just not going to do the talking? I'll do the talking. Okay. Okay. All right. Their Prime TX 1000 watt is a great choice for a high performance system. It features 80 plus titanium efficiency, which means less power gets wasted. Uh, It's fully modular. Features hybrid fan control to control overall fan noise and a fluid dynamic bearing fan, which uh, means longer lifetime. Plus, it comes with a 12 year warranty. A 12 year warranty! What else are you going to still be using in 12 years? Honestly. I mean, you everything, but I mean them. (laughs) I mean the consumers, okay? (laughs) The walking wall. Okay, this is an inside joke from a previous WAN show. I don't actually disrespect you guys this way. But uh, what what did I call them? (laughs) You said walking, and I immediately started racking my brain trying to remember, but I don't. It was like walking wallets or something like that when I was uh, playing my, like, my sort of blunt alter ego anyway. Uh, the point is, if you're building a new system and looking for a power supply you can rely on, you can trust Seasonic. Uh, check them out at seasonic.com or through the links down below. What do you want to talk about? Oh, oh, we got to do this. Um, public backlash against Microsoft for reducing gamers' power bills. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is a new segment we're calling what? No, it's not a new segment. Yeah, yeah. This is great. Okay, I will talk you through this. No, no, no. Don't. I don't know. Give her to read it. Okay. Microsoft issued a recent press release announcing a new optional shutdown mode as an alternative to the previous sleep mode. So sleep, I think we're all pretty familiar with the concept, right? Um, The device goes into a very, very, very low power state, but is still on effectively. There's still juices flowing through the silicon. Okay. Um, but the benefit is that it wakes up really fast. Like, you need to play some Call of Duty now! <laughs> so sleep. I mean, it, it is nice. Yeah, it's great. And sleep is good. I love sleep. Yeah. Love, who needs sleep? Yeah. Oh, you're never gonna get it. Who needs sleep? Tell me what's that for? Bare naked ladies. Anyway, the point is, uh, politicians <laughs> and media figures decried the move as an attack on gaming. With one Fox News segment describing Microsoft's change to the Xbox's power settings as a conspiracy targeting children. This is this is despite only 20% of US gamers being under the age of 18, and despite that being a phenomenally L take. Representative Troy Nels? I don't know how to pronounce this. An elected official. Okay, I, can't I read told it. it's I Nils. told the new writer not to editorialize, but this is really funny. <laughs> Representative Troy Nels, an elected official and adult man, tweeted, <laughs> "They want to take your guns. They want to take your gas stoves, and now they want to take your Xbox. What's next?" <laughs> I love that. Sorry, that's a that's a good line. That that editorialization gets a thumbs up. Fox likewise <laughs> published an article subtitled Oh my gosh. Woke Brigade, I wish this was fake, but no, I am actually on foxnews.com. Woke Brigade is after video games. So is this how they branded it because I don't understand having the option to shut down 
being a bad thing. Like I genuinely being as open to other ideas as possible. Alternative ideas. Yes, go ahead. I don't get it. It's just an option to shut down. It's not mandatory, right? It's an option. You can still sleep it, right? Am I missing something? Is anything actually changing? They just have another button, right? They have one more button. Did anything else change? They are automatically applying the new mode, but you can go back to the old mode. Oh. So it goes into... So so shutdown mode takes about 15 seconds to turn on. So right now, yes. if I press the button on my controller and I say like Xbox turn off, in the past it would have gone to sleep and now it shuts down. Yes. If I say Xbox go to sleep, does it go to sleep? Uh, well, yeah, you just change it to go to sleep mode. But I have to go into a menu that does yeah. that. Which you're a slack-jawed, drooling gamer, so you probably can't handle. <laughs> I I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I, don't, I don't understand. It's I, an option! I wish this was fake. Um, I don't get it. Rick DeVos, a political commentator and owner of the Orlando Magic, said... Just another small marker on the shoot. We are zooming down where every functionality, experience, and general service level degradation is celebrated as a great and glorious victory for the planet slash justice, etc. I don't think it's a great and glorious victory. I think it's an option. Would they, would they, do you, uh, <laughs> do you think they would have gotten less flame if they didn't make it the new default? No, I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. Uh, this is great. Um, alongside Fox's article, uh, which is apparently playing media in the background. Thank you very much. I will navigate I away from that site now. Um, Fox included helpful uh, a boomer's guide to what an Xbox is imagery. Um, a Microsoft Xbox controller is seen at the Electronic Entertainment Expo, or E3, in Los Angeles, June 17th, 2015. Xbox has remained one of the chief major video game console companies alongside PlayStation and Nintendo. Um, actually, it would be um, Xbox... Uh, Microsoft has remained one of the chief uh, video game console companies alongside Sony and Nintendo, but good try. I mean, I'm being pedantic, but, like, frankly, you're asking no, for I, it. I, I, yeah. Master Chief, the protagonist of the Halo... A series in the Xbox Series X I enjoy trailer Halo in 2019. From time to time. The Halo series is one of the main intellectual properties associated with the Xbox brand, if not its flagship. <laughs> cool. Uh, so our our, cool. our writer, who I told not to editorialize too much, um, called these figure one and two. Local boomer explains what an <laughs> Xbox is. <laughs> okay, again, I, th I think I do. I, I've been, I've talked against a lot of the editorialization. I think, again, this one's actually probably pretty fair. If you have to explain to someone what an Xbox is, oh. you're going to sound like a boomer. This is great. Um, so the the shutdown or sleep options have always been there. The, all they did was change the default one. And the idea is that it's it's only... Okay, so here. It's it's not a lot of power when it's sleeping. I think it works out to... It's like, well, okay, when, it's like when one and a half... Gonna, when on, is it going like, to do the default, though? You press the button? Yeah. Is that the only case? Because I feel like if you voice control and you tell it to sleep, it's going to sleep. And if you voice control and you tell it to shut off, it's going to shut off. I don't Xbox. Neither of us Xbox. Yeah. Neither of us know. Yeah, let us know. I at least know what it is. Master Chief. <laughs> Xbox. No, it's Halo. Intellectual properties. <laughs> no, no. Um, anywho, it's, it's not oh. a lot of power. It's, I think it's like a watt and a half or something. Like it's a very It's a very small amount. But... On average, Microsoft expects this to save gamers about a dollar a month on their power bill. And Sweet. when you factor in that there are literally millions of these machines sitting idle, it's actually a substantial savings. Yeah. Um, and you would think in a place where not that long ago there were like rolling blackouts like in uh, large regions of the country because of like a power crisis... Um, that any sort of effort to save power would be would be welcomed, uh, and you would think that um, if a concern would be the you know strain on the grid of things like electric car charging and that being a, a good reason to um, you know keep using fossil fuels for to, to power vehicles. Um, you you would think that 
if, if that's a legitimate concern for you, that any effort to save power would be welcome. But I just, um, I don't know. I I get, so apparently, apparently they're mad because of how it was worded. Carbon aware? Um, yeah. Okay. It was advertised as like a carbon aware update. But imagine getting hung up on like words. Imagine that like... I don't get it, man. I still don't get it. <laughs> Just because, like, it's an option and you can change it. I Apparently, they're also upset about the whole slippery slope thing. But again, it's an option and you can change it. I have, like, the exact opposite anger with the Switch. I hate that the Switch cannot be turned off. Yeah, yeah. It's so annoying. This is a battery power device. I want it to work the next time I pick it up. The next time I pick it up might not be for, like, a week. I don't want it to go to sleep. I want it to shut down. It doesn't take that long to turn on. Just like, come on. You know what takes a long time with the Switch? Initial charging before you can use it. Yeah. If it's dead, it's going to stay dead for like a really long time before it allow you to turn it on. That's super annoying. I want it to shut down. That's not because of power consumption reasons. That's because I want it to work the next time I pick it up. That actually annoys me a lot. This is very confusing to me. You can't voice control an Xbox series? Is that what the new one's called? Just series? Yeah, it's really stupid. <sighs> Microsoft's naming scheme for Xbox is actually the worst thing You can ever. definitely power off the Switch. Yeah, but you have to like hold press the power button for a while and then navigate to it. Just pressing the bu- button doesn't power it off. And I don't think you can change a setting to make that happen. Maybe you can. I don't know. It's just annoying. <sighs> you mad, bro? I just don't get it. I'm more confused than mad. I'm far more confused than mad. I don't think I'm mad at all. I think looking at it from the outside, it's just funny. Like seeing them talk about like, this is the halo and stuff is just entertaining. Um, But I I don't get why you'd be upset because it is so easy to change back. I can totally understand like, hey, okay, every day you come home from work, you, you play an hour of Xbox or something and... You've only got your fixed amount of time because that's when, like, the kids come home or something and now you have to do whatever. And you, you don't want to wait that extra amount of time. You want to turn it on, you want to work. Okay, sure. Just have it go to sleep every time. Who cares? It costs yeah. you a dollar a month. Okay. Really? I, I mean, I'm, I'm mostly just kind of riling you up right now. So the, the, the problem is just in the way that it was messaged as being green and eco-friendly and yeah. carbon carbon conscious. I still don't and, get why they care. And all that kind of... Well, because because for a certain group of people, um, the, the burning of, of fossil fuels and the emissions that we put into the environment are a non-issue and a fabrication that are scaremongering. Uh, I saw a really interesting okay, the, clip of someone... This- Someone asking Greta Thunberg, 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 I can't remember. The point is, uh, sure. you know, asking her a really uncomfortable question, uh, which was, it was something along the lines of, it's unseasonably warm here in Davos, um, so where's your climate crisis now? And it's like, matter. are you actually, I, I can't, and she laughed, and they're like, yeah, she had no response. No, her, she had a response. Her response was, you're a flippin' idiot. <laughs> um and you are undeserving of actual words. That that was the response. You just didn't understand it because you're a flipping idiot. My thing is, like, if if you believe all that, just why do you care? I, like, why do you... It's just an Xbox, like... Yeah, but, like, now it takes 15 seconds to turn on. Like, if... If, if you don't if uh, Xbox, change that one setting. Let, let's, let's and flip, realistically... Let's flip this story. Can you figure out how to change that setting? Yeah. No, but that you can, but them. Oh, <laughs> Gotcha. Uh, uh, if we flip this around and Microsoft is like, you know what? Let's pump it. We're all tired of boot times, right? Boot times suck. We're changing the default behavior from sleep. I understand that's not what it is. We're changing the default, beha- yeah. or sorry, we're changing the default behavior from turning off to sleep. Yeah. Because you know what? It's worth it. Megawatt. You spend the extra buck Megawatt. a month. Screw the power grid. Nobody cares. Screw them all. Sleep is great. More power. No boot times. I don't care. Because <laughs> I could still change the setting, right? Yes. Like, why does it matter? You I can don't... change the setting anytime you want. I'm going to be like, that's weird, and then change the setting if I want it to shut off. Which, if I own an Xbox, I would want it to shut off because I'm probably not going to use it that often. But, I mean, I do own an Xbox. Wow. I forgot. 
I don't use it that often. I'm happy it's off. Um, <laughs> but if I used it every day, and there has been times, like I played Halo, I played a ton of Halo 2. If I was playing Halo 2 as much as I did back then, maybe I'd want it to sleep. I was a kid at that time. Maybe my dad wants it to turn off. I don't yeah. know. But like, it's an option. I don't care what the company thinks. Why would I care what the company thinks? Well, what if they take away your sleep later? Th- Slippery then, slope. Then they're jerks. And then, then, I'll get and then you can buy a PlayStation. Yeah. Like, honestly, the consumer chooses at the end of the day. Yeah. But then again, the consumer chooses unwisely a lot. Oh, all the time. Microtransactions. Let's Constantly. talk about that. I don't want to talk about microtransactions. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to this be is really great, right though. Now. Dark 24 on float plane. Every time a user saves power on Xbox, I have to leave on another light to combat the saving. <laughs> now what? <laughs> it's great. I, I, can, it. I can't plug in any more lights. <laughs> I'm out of lights now! <laughs> I'm dark 24 and I don't have any lights. <laughs> I'm going to be light 24. <laughs> light bright. I, oh. Yeah, I just don't, because it's entirely in your control, I just don't understand why people care. It's and just I, this the, feels it's, like it's they, the outrage. It cycle. feels like they didn't have anything to care about that day. Yes. I'm agreeing with you. Uh, so, they, so they just threw at this because there's nothing else to throw at, which is just like, that's whatever. I just. I think you will be a happier and more fulfilled person if you care about things that matter. And I'm not saying that the things that matter you have to agree with me on. Maybe we're at odds. As mm. long as you think it matters, it's fine. I had the power consumption numbers wrong. Series consumes 11 to 13 watts, according to the Catelier in Twitch chat, in standby mode, and 0.5 watts in off mode. So it's like 10 watts. It's like something. Yeah, so about a, about a buck a month, apparently. Cool. All right. Let's talk about your butt. Uh, okay. Yeah. How's it going? It's Canadian. <laughs> it's, it's Canada's, it's Canada's butt. <laughs> Triple A Canadian beef. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ham. Um, okay, so more specifically, Linus has had uh, one of Ludwig's bidets. Oh, yes. I think they have a name, right? Uh, you know, yeah. Ludwig's yeah, bidets. Swipe Plus. I have, swipe Plus. I have the Swipe Plus in How's my bathroom. How's the Swipe Plus going? Yeah, it took me a while to get it installed because North American bathrooms don't have a lot of power in them. That's true. Um, you'll usually get one, what, what, what is it, EFI, grounded outlet or whatever it is, like by the sink for your, your shaver or uh, charging your toothbrush or whatever, and not much else. So you, you won't typically have an outlet anywhere near floor level or near the toilet. Uh, because you know water and bathrooms are totally a thing and so wow the seo for this is kind of rough i googled swipe plus and it was like far down yeah huh oh, that's, luke's what? laptop's not working anymore oh, that's well. interesting well it's not the first one it's not the second one not the third not Did the fourth not the fifth not on? the sixth it's the seventh anywho um check your hdmi cord so i had to get a power outlet put into my bathroom so that took a little while but now that i've got it this is not my first experience with a bidet. Um, yeah. I, my, my first... So traveled. Yeah, my first time using one was when we went to Japan. And basically, I, I, I think I've told this story before, but as we were driving to somewhere far from the airport, uh, I had to use a rest stop bathroom. And I was blown away by the quality and yeah. cleanliness of it. Totally. It was on the side of the road. And it was probably the nicest bathroom I had ever been in in my life, including like like washrooms at you know multi million dollar hotels in Vegas and stuff like that. Like it was just wow, this is a really nice bathroom. Like I can't, it doesn't smell like rest stop bathroom <laughs> at all. It's yeah, like, there's a there's a unique scent to that. Yeah, yeah. it's it's amazing, um, and I, I you know I have to I have to confess like. I was I was kind of sitting there going like, man, imagine sitting at like a business meeting, you know, because if OK, if there's if there's a, a Japanese stereotype, it would be that culturally there's a lot of focus on on business. Um, sure. You know, not everyone, obviously, but I think it's it's pretty fair to say that, um, you know, Japanese business has definitely been a core part of their culture for a very long time. And the first thing I thought was, man. If I was sitting at the boardroom table with some, you know, filthy foreigner who I knew had a stanky undercarriage, <laughs> would I feel like I had the upper hand? Yes, sir. <laughs> I, have... I can't help it. <laughs> oh, 
I'm gonna own this guy in his business deal because his because <laughs> his yeah, butt isn't washed. He properly. can't even clean himself <laughs> like an animal. Disgusting. <laughs> That's funny. Now, with that said, you know, came back to came back to North America where bidets are not common. And, you know, and you were a stanky butt. And I was a stanky, disgusting foreigner. Yeah. Um, you know, using this like like what. Like like toilet toilet paper. I'm sitting here going like, yeah. Why do we do this? We literally manufacture this so that we can flush it down the toilet. This is like a, the best example of manufactured waste. Yeah, it's it's like it's like running on it. It's like running on it. It's like ima- imagine your whole job is to produce toilet paper. You spent your whole life running on a treadmill producing absolutely nothing of value. Like great, um, right? Like it, it it's like the, it's emblematic of just the pointlessness of. Everything, <laughs> toilet paper production. Um, so I, yeah, I came back and I was like, okay, I guess I'll use toilet paper now. But I was, um, but I've always been like kind of curious about it, like or not curious about it. I've always been kind of like interested in upping my game. Uh, and so when Yvonne and I rented the house, I was like, hey, do you want to put in like fancy toilets? And she's like, ah, I don't really care. And I'm like, okay, I kind of kind of over it. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was the effort. Yeah, I was about it because I, I like I've been to fancy toilet stores at like. Um, uh, Aberdeen Mall and stuff like that. We haven't had a lot of options in North America for a long time. Oh, you can get them. Yeah, I, you just got to go to like the more the more Asian style shopping okay, centers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So like at Aberdeen Mall, I remember stopping by this like fancy toilet store where like they start at like fifteen hundred dollars and go go into thousands, right? With all these like heating and pulsing features and all that. Anyway. Uh, when Ludwig's thing came along and I was sitting here going, hey, we've had such success with the Jerry Rig Everything Knife on LTT store. You know, why don't we like carry more creator merch? Okay, sure. But obviously I'm not going to just carry something without verifying that it's not crap. And uh, I can verify it is not crap. Ah, cool. Um, you know, it's it's not the highest end option on the market. It's designed to... It's not priced that way either. No, it's not. It's designed to be retrofitted to your existing toilet. They have a non-heated, non you know, uh, so that's the swipe air drying. Normal. Yeah, the regular yeah. swipe is pretty darn affordable and is just that's fifty bucks. I didn't know that. Uh, but it's also just a nozzle that sprays cold water at your sphincter. That so makes like, sense. It's, yeah. yeah, it's priced accordingly. Yeah. Pucker up. Yeah, <laughs> and then the swipe plus. <laughs> Thank you for that. And then the swipe plus has the heated C and the lighting. <laughs> You know, so the water doesn't look yellow and yucky, and like it has like a, a carbon filter in it, so that you know it it takes the toilet water from the from the dryer or the, like the toilet smell from the dryer and doesn't yeah. just like pump it out into the room and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, it's been it. Let me just say that um, feeling clean. Well, no, I we don't have one here at work, and oh. I I did you know. I thought we in the lower bathroom here. I didn't use it. Oh, okay. Yeah, there there is one there from that Am- Amazon viewer's so we've got choice. Clean video. butt, dirty butt. Yeah. I feel advantageous right now. D- there you go. <laughs> there you go. Boy's a winner. <laughs> I I've had one for a while when there was that toilet paper scare with the pandemic. Mm. I had already been thinking about getting a bidet, and then I was just like, you know what? Let's just remove ourselves from this equation right yeah. now. And to be clear, you can still use a little bit of toilet paper. Yeah. In fact, I'd recommend it just for we, like drying off. We do, but you use a s- very, very significantly lower amount. So much less. Like where yeah. you need like a mitt to, you know, <laughs> deal with some of the... You don't need a mitt anymore. <laughs> yeah, you don't need a mitt anymore. <laughs> it's, you, just need, you just need some like drying, based, some extra drying. And mine has like a fan thingy, so you can get most of the way there. Yep, yep. But I e- mean, you're sitting there on your phone anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Might yeah. as well turn on the the, the drying the, the fan. fan. Yeah, so like yeah. if you spend the whole time, it's fine. But uh, yeah, whatever. Um, so we we would still get toilet paper, but like other people are like, oh, I need like all this amount to like make it through whatever amount of time. So yeah. I got however many people, and for us, like f- for the two of us to get through a roll is going to take like a long time. Yeah. Whereas before it was like gone, right? So I don't know. That was it's been good. And when I I travel- they're coming for your toilet paper next. Oh jeez! Uh, when I traveled to uh, France and then Greece, that was two weeks of not being able to use it. And yeah, I felt gross. Yeah, I didn't like feel like oh I'm like significantly clean or anything after we got it. It just felt kind of neutral. Yeah. But then not having it, I'm like, Ugh. yeah, no, I I get it. Yeah. 
Like I, I can go both ways at this point. We only have one on the the one toilet. I'm gonna get around to putting like regular swipes on the other ones because I'm not gonna get power plugs put into every bathroom just yeah. to like put like yeah, yeah whatever. But um, I do I do prefer it. I will say the swipe plus with the warmed water is definitely a plus the warm, compared the, to the cold the water. water. The warmed water is nice. <laughs> it's a difference maker. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is in like the guest bathrooms or whatever, people might not even use it. Like yeah. I, I wouldn't want to drop a bunch. I wouldn't bother. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I need to uh, use the washroom real quick because I drank a lot of water before the show started. So Here's hopefully the you can find something to talk about. Are you going to use the bidet toilet or not? Well, I will, but I, I'll be back fast enough that it won't have been that. <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm supposed to find a topic. You can merch message. Oh, I can do merch message. Okay, I'm going to steal one. Dan isn't even here, I think. Is Dan here? Nope. Nope, nobody's here. I'm alone. Uh, so I'm going to find a merch message. I want to find ones that I should actually answer, and that shouldn't be answered by Linus. So this might take a second. You're going to have to stick with me. Um, I'll jump on this one. I haven't even fully read it yet, but I think I can answer it. Hi, Linus, Luke, and Dan, or in this case, just Luke. I'm an aspiring game developer, and I'm about to release my first indie game on Steam. That's super cool. Congrats. That's awesome. If you guys could create your dream game, what kind of features or content would you choose? Linus isn't here, um, but I know that... Oh, what's the name of it? Ah, there's a game that he likes a lot, which is like, nope, oh. pixel art, kind of top downy puzzle and RPG game. Final Fantasy. My brain went to Rune World, but that's not it. That's mm. definitely not Oldscape? it. Oldscape. Ah, oh, what is it called? It's not Oldscape. I don't remember the name. Maybe he'll answer when he comes back. Uh, but it's a really cool crosscode. Thank you, Dark Twenty Four. Dark Twenty Four found enough light bulbs. Um, it's crosscode. So he like kind of wanted to make a game for a long time and then played CrossCode and was basically like, this is what I wanted to make. Um, so there you go. Uh, there's a good example of, of his. I've always been interested in making games. Um, I've had a lot of different ideas over the years. Uh, something that I've wanted to do for quite a while now and actually a couple months ago, I downloaded um, Unreal Engine because I wanted to start messing around with it, and I was messing around with yeah. some things. And then I was like, yeah, this is too much work, and kind of stopped, and maybe I'll pick it up again one day. But I've always wanted to make a, a like, story-based firefighting game. I thought that really? Would be, I thought it would be really fun. Firefighter simulator. I've never seen someone do that. Hmm. There might be good reason. <laughs> No, that seems but I like it'd I can't be really interesting. Firefighter career mode? Yeah, heck yeah. I think it could be kind of sweet. I think there's a lot of dynamic situations you could put the player in. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, choice and the world reacts to it type of things that could happen that way. Um, I think that could be pretty sweet. The, the question was... Um, Why is everybody talking about my favorite games? The question was, if you could create your own dream game, what features of content would you choose? And I brought up CrossCode. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Firewatch? I thought Firewatch was... I think that's a completely different, different thing. Yeah. A story-based... Uh, yeah, it's like a story-based about living in a forest. Yeah, right? I don't think it's... A f you're not a firefighter, though. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't that... You might uh, deal with fire, but you're not a firefighter. It's a different thing. Was there, was there a game? Or was there a book for the film adaptation? Hold on a second. I don't even know. Uh, anywho, cool. Film that, yeah, there was a film adaptation, apparently. Oh, no, it's coming. Okay, well, anywho. Film have an adaptation of what? Firewatch. Oh, really? Yeah. That, that kind of makes sense, to be Go honest. Go figure. Yeah. <clears throat> CNET. Want to talk about CNET? About CNET? Yeah, let's do it. Let's talk about CNET. <laughs> Do you I want to do this no one? idea they were doing this. Yeah, I'll jump on it. CNET issues mass corrections for AI written articles. Why did they do this? CNET has put a hold on their use of AI to write articles after publishing over 70 AI generated articles, primarily on finance related topics. <sighs> uh, an additional thing, just in case you don't know, finance is one of the highest CPMs you can have. Also known as those are a lot of the articles they're going to make a lot of money on. 
Uh, the first articles were published in November of last year under a CNET Money Staff byline. Only by clicking on that byline could a reader learn that the article was artificially generated. Despite the claim that these articles were thoroughly edited and fact-checked by a presumably human editor, over half now carry corrections. <laughs> Pretty, almost every time we've talked about OpenAI, I've brought up the confidently wrong thing. I can't believe they actually just did this, but anyways. Uh, mistakes included confusing basic finance terms and making basic financial math mistakes. That's another thing. Dan and I were talking about this before the show. People keep on trying to get ChatGPT to do stuff it's not made to do, and then they're like, LOL, dumb. And it's just like, what? Stop making it do math. <laughs> it's not made for that. What are you doing? Oh my goodness. Anyways, I'm not surprised that was a problem. It, it, there are tons of examples of it being bad at math because it's not, it's not made for that. Um, some corrections stated that CNET replaced phrases that were not entirely original. Um, okay. Plagiarism. So yeah, that would be interesting to see the exact examples of that. Um, the editor-in-chief stated CNET plans to continue using AI tools into the future. Of course they are. Um, and uh, to be clear, I'm not against that part. You just need to vet it properly. Like the, the in quotes, thoroughly edited and fact-checked by uh, an editor. Yeah, it should have just actually been. It sounds like it wasn't. Maybe someone tried to uh, make their job easier or something. I'm not sure. Meanwhile, BuzzFeed announced that they will be using AI to create entertainment content but stressed that their newsroom will remain human-generated and stressed that they will not replace existing workforce with AI. That's the right way to do it. Online publisher Medium has announced AI-generated content will be allowed if clearly disclosed, while many publications and writers that use Medium as a platform have already banned AI-authored works. There have already been cases of AI-enabled theft, rephrasing, and republication of copyrighted work. Lots of it. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you know, a technique that could be used to evade traditional anti-plagiarism tools. As One of the problems... Sorry, go for it. Uh, I was going to say, as I'm going through my Google News feed, I will often read an article on a site that I wouldn't have otherwise visited because it's just in my Google News feed where I go, okay, this was very clearly three articles basically mashed together because it's super redundant in a way that no decent human writer could ever... I'd just navigate away immediately as soon as I figure out that it was AI generated, but it's a lot of them. And so something I want to make clear here is I am very interested in the idea of chat GPT regurgitating basically word for word something that someone else has, has written. I'm looking for examples of that. Um, if you find examples of that, somehow get them to me. Um, don't email Floatplane support, by the way. We had... <laughs> I'm not aware of this. That keeps happening. Um, oh, okay. Luke it, is not float plane support. No, that's Joe. And Joe's very nice about it, but it takes up Joe's time. And yeah. there are lots of other things that Joe could do. Like um, supported customers. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like Joe's job. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So what I'm, what I'm not saying here mm. is that the plagiarism, plagiarized content got spat out by ChatGPT naturally. Oh. What might happen is they fed it stuff. Right. If you feed ChatGPT things, it's going to take from it because it right. thinks you, that you want it, it to. It thinks you gave it to it. Yeah. But actually someone else Yeah. It. So like yeah. that could be happening or it could just be doing that on its own. I don't know which one it is. I just don't think we should automatically pin ChatGPT for this if that's what they're using. I don't they don't even they didn't even say that they might be using something else. It's probably ChatGPT, but we don't actually know. Now would be a pretty good time to be like an anti-AI like uh like detection company. Oh yeah. There's some spinning up. Yeah, I bet there are. And they're probably going to get some fairly lucrative contracts from like schools, government agencies, lots of stuff like that. Yeah. I could totally see it. Man. New investment opportunity. Let's go. Um, 
Oh, I thought he was investing. <laughs> <laughs> Hacking the <laughs> mainframe. <laughs> Rage investing into these companies. Um, but yeah, anyways, co- consequently, there is a massive surge in demand for AI text detection, as you were just mentioning, yeah. especially among educators, as I just mentioned. Yeah. Um, someone in the chat before the show was actually, I, I don't remember your name, I'm sorry. Someone in the chat before the show was talking about how they're, they, they teach eighth grade um, uh, U.S. history. Ooh. And they were talking about how they've warned other teachers at their school and they're going to be teaching the kids in that class about chat GPT because they see it as a valuable research tool. Because I was like, why, how did, okay, so you teach history, how did teaching them about chat GPT possibly come up there? And they made an interesting argument. Yeah, no, there we go. Yeah, it's yeah, no. Um, they made an interesting argument of the why I'm, I'm teaching them how to research and I'm not teaching them to, to just trust it immediately, but it's, it's a, it's a step, right? So they, they can ask it questions. They can offboard from that into more specific searches. They mm-hmm. can do whatever. And I'm like, Oh my goodness, that actually does make sense. It's just very cool. But they had to warn the other teachers, right? Yeah. Cause they're going to teach them that in that subject because it's, it's super powerful tool in that yep. subject especially because it's history, so it doesn't matter that it's not trained on recent stuff. <laughs> but other classes might not be super stoked about it. It's interesting. Right. It's very interesting. Uh, coming back to what you had said about you know being um, like adamant that ChatGPT should be a paid tool because when things are free, they inevitably turn to garbage. Um, I read a really good article. Um, I found it on pluralistic.net here. It's from uh, Corey Doctorow. Anyway, I read it somewhere else, That's not here, but you should you should read it. It's It basically did a way better job of explaining that thing that you and I are always talking about, but never do a perfect job of explaining how, like, you know how I'll refer to, like, okay, in one of our pitches to creators for float plane early on, premium, comments. we would basically say we are not the Silicon Valley model or like, we're not, uh, our, our benefit is, is that we uh, take a sustainable approach to building this platform rather than uh, taking VC funding, which will inevitably become a problem at some point. I was never able to properly explain why that will inevitably become a problem. And so this, uh, this article is called TikToks and Shitification. Oops, I missed my bright button. Well, all right. <laughs> Shitification. Um, and basically talks about that cycle and how any new platform that is VC backed starts out by pleasing its users until it grows a big user base, then moves on to pleasing its partners, which helps it grow its, um, its revenues, then moves on to pleasing itself, which helps it enrich itself. And so, you know how I've talked a lot about how Amazon used to be great for shopping. Um, My particular favorite feature was um, people who looked at this item usually bought these. Well, that feature no longer exists because, as this article points out, Amazon has reached their end game where it is all about generating value for themselves, for their shareholders, where there is no benefit to having organic search results. There's no benefit to having good pricing. Everybody's already locked into Amazon. Uh, so they, they point out that out of the first five pages of results for Catbed, 50% of the results are sponsored because effectively Whoa. buying placement is the only way yeah. to get exposure on Amazon now because they moved past pleasing the customers, which is when we had features like that. Now they've moved past pleasing their partners. Um, be- Bad thing to do. Yeah, exactly. Happy partner, happy life, right? Uh, They've moved past pleasing their partners, so they just essentially have them all bidding on each other, bidding against each other because that's the only way they can survive, which means the pricing sucks because everybody has to absorb these exorbitant fees to participate on the platform. Um, And they're just focused on money, 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 money. Uh, And anyway, so it's talking about how TikTok is starting to enter its uh, second stage of... Uh, it's a re- really good article, guys. Uh, cool. I'll link it in yeah. the chat. Go go check it out. Um, but it basically talks about how like they have a button to boost creators, like giving them like a ton of views, and it's the equivalent of the Carney 
allowing one user to win the big teddy bear. So they walk around at the fair all day. So people think that it's possible to win the teddy bear, but then they have a button that makes it so the ball will pop out for everyone else. So they can just collect your money. Um, yeah, really, really, really good article. So I'll, I'll drop that in the, in the chat. while we move on. I forget what you were talking about, but good job. (laughs) (laughs) Discussion question. When is it okay to use AI? Uh, what will the impact of Buzzfeed's decision be? Uh, what are the pros and cons of anyone being hypothetically able to compete with Buzzfeed style of content using AI? I mean, we're going to see. I, I'm not even going to try and speculate how this is going to play out, but it's going to be interesting. That's, that's for a, sure. Those are those are extremely difficult questions that I think could be discussed for for many days, and I mm-hmm. think there will genuinely be entire books based around individual questions that were in that whole line of questioning. A Prime in Float Plane Chat says, uh, Amazon does this. Customers who viewed items in your browsing history also viewed, but that's not the one I'm talking about. They didn't buy it. There used to be one that was customers who viewed this item ultimately purchased these. So you could kind of rely on crowdsourcing the research. Now, that probably created sometimes undue momentum for certain SKUs um, and might have made bad products or products that had been replaced by better ones stickier than they should have been. But man, every time I used it, I like got a pretty good one. Yeah. If I didn't really care about getting exactly the right thing, far enough. Yeah. I wanted something that was ninety five percent. It was the best. I don't buy stuff off Amazon, but I do use Amazon, and I'll use Amazon sometimes for the frequently bought together thing, because it's a nice way to find adapters and converters and stuff. I find uh, you can find like the right thing to make that thing work along with the rest of the stuff that you might have because it will like link it. And usually if it's said frequently bought together, you know they will actually work together, which is kind of nice. Yep. Um, but yeah. <sighs> then I go find it somewhere else and buy it there because I don't like Amazon. Which is fair. Yeah. But then you might like them if they were still consumer first. Yeah, most of my issues with them are about how they treat the people that work for them at low levels. You mean the contractors? that work for other companies that are not Amazon's problem. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, and, and um, what was I going to say? How, yeah. they, how they tend to just crush small businesses and, and stuff. I, I don't think they are good. Right, but that's, so you'll really enjoy this article because talking about how, like crushing small businesses by outcompeting them and then clawing it all back after is like the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right, what, what, what else is there for us to talk about here? Is there topics left, or are we just merch messaging it? All the wave way of faulty GPUs possibly caused by crypto miners offloading improperly stored equipment. So that happened. Thank you for preparing that uh, topic, but I don't know that I'm going to talk about it much more than that. Yeah, uh, apparently that the, the dies are cracking. Yeah, which is bad. Yep. Uh, oh, Samsung ignores widespread SSD failures until they get news coverage. Uh, here's some more news coverage. Samsung, don't do that. Yeah, um, bad. Yeah, like. Stop drives it. that had been barely used were reporting like massive hits to their estimated durability remaining and samsung was like oh and then it went kind of viral and they were like, oh, okay and you are made okay uh, it's not clear still what exactly the problem is i think samsung has some lessons to learn about uh transparency if they just said what it was then we would be telling you guys hey here's what it is uh here's why you shouldn't worry about it too much here's how they're going to fix it but instead they're just leaving it a mystery and you don't want mystery around a storage product. Yeah. So all I can say now is don't buy a 990 Pro. So that's not better, Samsung. You <laughs> need to do better. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have anything else to add. <laughs> that's legit. Uh, Google dropped support for OnHub. This sucks. OnHub routers, which were first released in late 2015, so not that oh, long yeah. ago, yeah. Uh, will still operate as Wi-Fi routers, but will no longer receive firmware updates, and it is no longer possible to control the router remotely, nor to access and change settings. We were pretty against cloud control routers, right? I don't remember. I Was hope so. Meraki or whatever? Oh, Oh, I know what you're talking about. No, no, it wasn't Meraki. It was a, um, it was like a budget Cisco product that you're talking about the one that you inherited from me that you cannot change the password on, right? 
Ah, oh, still have that. Crap! It was uh, it was someone's. That was an AP. It was someone's like consumer brand. Was it Ruckus's? I don't remember. Hold on. I don't know. It required some kind of account, and then. I thought it was Meraki. Was it? Are you sure it's not? It might. I mean, I don't know. Anyway, the point is that it's a white box. I plug it in. I know the password. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you still use that thing. Well, I don't now because my apartment's small, but I still have it. <laughs> nice. Uh, apparently, Meraki is the budget Cisco product. Okay, yeah. So he, somehow he ended up with a router that had licensing that allowed us to change everything. And then he didn't want to pay for licensing. I get it. And now nothing can be changed, but it does still work. So I guess this is basically that. It's still set to his old password because he was using it for a while. And before it ran out of its licensing, I don't know who did this, probably you, but someone was wise enough to set it into AP mode. Mm, so that was that probably it, me. So yeah. that its value would be extended. Because yeah, if you can't it like a control router or it at all, you're not going to want it to function as a router. Um, <laughs> so it's it's an AP mode with a fixed password that you can't change, which is like a security problem for sure. Um, but, but it technically works. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, theoretically, it's been in a box for a couple of years, but there is no plan to transition on hub to any other means of control. This sucks. Yep. The Google support page literally suggests buying a new router. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Man. What Google hardware will you trust at this point? Just their phones? I don't even know if I trust those. To be just EOL'd? You think they're going to EOL pixels? I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? I mean, they yeah. EOL'd the Nexus line. They just axe everything. See you later. Yeah. Yeah, I know what we do pixel now. It's totally different. <laughs> I mean, remember, okay, tablets. They used to have tablets. What happened to the Nexus 7? Where's that? Yeah, fair enough. Where's that at? Yeah, Google Sketch, man. Yeah, that's what I thought. You might buy a product and then just not have it anymore. Did Was Google the one that had that weird camera that was supposed to, like, automatically record stuff? Mm. Hold on. That's ringing a bell. AI camera, auto record. Is, is that is that a thing? Is that a thing that happened? Yeah, Google Clips. Look at this stupid thing. Did they ever actually release this thing? AI camera. Yeah, here it is. Hey, Dieter. Go away. Yeah, and it's supposed to like... That they that all the promotional crap for this was just oh man it was so stupid it was like for, like videos of like dogs and stuff or whatever like why 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 would that be there why would you ever have a camera anywhere unless you intend to do something with it <laughs> man so dumb like it was just obviously stupid the second they unveiled it how did this make it past how did this make it past some idiot pitching it and getting like fired like I just don't. I don't get it, you know? This this reminds me of a Kickstarter project. So I, I will still look at like Kickstarter every once in a blue moon because I find it interesting, but ever getting, uh, uh, you know, hammered by a certain project, I I don't back anything anymore. But what I'll do is I'll try to find the, the like company page. Hopefully they have a company page instead of just a Kickstarter page. Yeah. And I'll bookmark that and I put it in a little folder. And every like, I don't know, six months, Check in on it. See how it's going. Literally zero things in that folder have launched. Zero. Really? So happy I didn't back anything. And that reminded me because one thing that I found was like, it's a little, and I know, um, it's a little bird feeder, but it's an outdoor bird feeder and it has a camera in it. You know, that's just called an outdoor bird feeder, right? <laughs> well, like an outdoor bird feeder is just actually, no, it's just called a bird feeder. <laughs> Fair enough. Generally speaking, they go there's, outdoors. There's bird feeders for indoors. <laughs> You're actually a crazy bird man. Yes. You know this, right? Yeah. See, Dan agrees. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I get it. I just that's why I said okay. I know before that's I started this. Fine. Uh, but there's this there is this thing uh, that it's so it's a bird feeder for outdoors. Yes. So it's a bird feeder. Carry on. <laughs> and it has a basically a webcam built into it. Yeah. Does it charge by by solar power? Because if it doesn't, you're never going to charge that. I think it does. Yeah. I don't remember. I mean, it better. It's been like years since I bookmarked it. Sure. Um, but it, it detects when a bird's in front of it, and it'll record a little video for you. Wow. 
well, that'll improve your quality of life. Doesn't seem that complicated. Yeah. It's been a year. <laughs> they haven't launched it. I don't know. At this point, there's other ones on the market. I didn't buy those because I was just like, I don't know. I'm kind of over the idea, to be honest. But just <laughs> out of interest, I'm still like tracking it. I just check in every once in a while to see how it's going. And yeah, it hasn't launched yet. No, no shipments yet. Would you like to hear something interesting, though? No, don't tell. No. No. I hope this isn't what I think it is. No. Regarding the coal bar. No! <laughs> the hammer crowbar combo. We have apparently heard back from them. <sighs> and Nick has a conversation scheduled. No! Next week. No! He's doing this only to hurt me. I, I hope like I hope I hope people in the audience understand that that is the only reason. There is no other reason. There's no business. He knows it's not a good business decision. He a hundred percent knows it's not a good business decision. He I, there's no way he thinks it's actually like worth the content that's going to come out of it. He just knows it will hurt me. And that is the only goal. If this is this is this is deep trolling. This is trolling on another level that I I don't know if you guys actually understand. I disagree. I think he thinks it's a great product. No, he doesn't. I'd use it. Look at his face. Look at his face. You know he doesn't. This that's literally the Linus troll face. There's a reaction on Floatplane and I think on Twitch that is literally that face. <laughs> it's, it's just me smiling. <laughs> Just because I'm a smiling, bad idea, Luke. Kyle, come on! Just because I'm smiling doesn't mean I'm trolling. <laughs> nice, Kyle's on board. Uh, Let's go. How could you do this to me, Kyle? You're Kyle. Uh, okay, if Kyle has a significant amount of involvement with the like design process, then maybe it'll actually be well, good. No, Kyle and his team. You know, we have four people. Yeah. On the uh, like tool engineering team now, right? Yeah. Like we are working on stuff. I know that because I read through the audit that Dan did for me on everyone who's changed their passwords in the company. So there's going to be a message sent out to the managers and executives at Linus Media Group about how that wasn't bleeping done. Mm, I see. <laughs> so we're going to get a one week extension. To next week. Okay. And if it's not done by next week, we're going to waste a lot of time. And it's going to be awesome. Because Dan or I are going to have to sit down with every single person that didn't update their passwords. Which is basically freaking everybody. You know I'm just going to be sitting down with, like, Vance, right? Which is going to be a massive waste of time. The, the reason why I thought about it, Kyle, was because your team did it. I did know that, and I appreciate it. And that's why I thought about it. Kyle's team did it, and Logistics did it. To be fair... Logistics had like four passwords that they had to update. <laughs> I have a lot of passwords. Yeah. And it can be, this is the thing. And this is the reason why I sent the messages specifically to leaders of teams mm. and technically all the executives twice. Because you guys need to do your jobs and delegate. <laughs> Get it done. <laughs> okay. I know you have a lot of passwords. I do. A prime says I did it. <laughs> good, good job. See, look, th this is why you need a crowbar. So I did that my two. Can... <laughs> it's a crowbar. Ooh. Uh, nope, he doesn't need a crowbar. Um, never mind. The coal bar collab is canceled. <laughs> uh, here's another good topic for us. AMD uh. calls out AMD for bad value GPUs. This is funny, but I respect it. AMD's own blog recently published a post titled. Never a better time to upgrade with Radeon graphics. Um, within it, one graphic compared AMD's GPUs on value for the money, showing FPS per dollar. Uh, their latest flagship GPUs come in at less than half of the FPS per dollar of AMD's best value GPU, the RX 6400. Uh, for reasons unknown, the graphic is arranged with the worst value GPUs at the top and the best at the bottom. <laughs> Uh, total FPS is featured more prominently with big red bars, so I guess uh, they are arranged in order of more FPS. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, under that graphic, there's an explanation in small type of how these results were achieved. Um, all cards were tested at max settings except the RX 6400, which was tested at medium settings, thereby making all the more expensive GPUs look even worse in terms of value. <laughs> 
uh, because uh, this number is basically a big pile. Uh, <laughs> okay, I respect it a lot less now. I didn't <laughs> yeah. know that part. Uh, discussion question. Should <laughs> AMD's marketing department just ritually disembowel <laughs> themselves now, or would poison be cleaner? <laughs> okay, I respected it at first because I thought they were, like, not shying away from things that people in the industry generally know, which is, like, the maximum tier card is not going to be the best price for performance, but sure, you're going to get the best FPS and stuff. Like, I thought they were doing a decent educational thing, and then I heard about how they did it. Yeah. And uh, now, may maybe poison. Yeah, the 6400 uh, being at medium settings, like, I get it. You don't want to show that it gets, like... No FPS? You know, 22 FPS. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also, no, you don't get to do that. That's not how benchmarking yeah, works. Yeah, it's like super not okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's pretty cool. Um, oh, wow. We have an LTX 2023 update. Oh, a cool one. Let's for, go. For those of you who made it this deep into the show, thank you. Oh, oh nice. Way. Yeah. 18. LTX 2023 ticket sales will go live on Monday, February the 6th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, you must create an account on the store in order to complete your checkout. You can do so in advance by visiting tickets.ltxexpo.com. Tickets are first come, first served, and they will not be held. So make that account like, now. now. Or when someone stands over you with a crowbar. <laughs> I don't need a crowbar. Uh, they will go to whoever completes the checkout the fastest. Uh, we do not have any kind of like verified actual gamer thing, which would have been cool, but I was told that the float plane team is, quote, busy, end quote. <laughs> yeah. The VIPs from the canceled 2020 and the whale VIPs from, oh, whale land VIPs from 2022 have apparently been sent an email with instructions on how they can access tickets in advance for a pre-sale event as promised. Oh, okay, cool. cool. So we're making sure that we're taking care of the folks who won the ticket sales lottery before but didn't ultimately get to go to something. That's that's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. That's exciting. Man, I'm I'm excited. LTX is going to be a blast. We have I'm like stoked. so much the last of a bigger one was team. So sweet. Yeah. Like the, it was it was cool, you know, up until the last one. But the last one was a totally different level. The last one made all the previous ones feel like cringe. <laughs> really kind of, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and they were fine for what we were at the time. But it They was were clear. fine, but I didn't really want to invite anyone to them. You know what I mean? Like randoms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like they were for, they were for, I, uh, I'm always hesitant about the word fan because, you know, I see a lot of what we do as a meetup. not fandom, but like viewership. I, I, I want, I want to earn it. I don't want fanatical, you know, following or whatever. Yes, agreed. The first ones were fan meetups. Yep. You know, that's what they were. And that's fine. That has a place. And then the last one was like an expo that was actually super sick. I invited, an I event. didn't invite any of my friends to any of the previous ones. Yeah. I invented some, I invited some of my friends to that last one. They and had invented a some friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes I I struggle. Okay, come on. <laughs> it's okay. Me too. Uh, <laughs> you were a figment of my imagination all along. It's Fight Club. <laughs> You're Brad Pitt. You, you, you've been soloing the way. You never actually brought another person onto the WAN show. Yeah. You've been soloing it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I live in your walls. <laughs> Where's that voice come from? Uh, but yeah, the last one was great. So if this one is uh, a continuation or an improvement, then it's going to be fantastic. I'm excited. Well, we've got Sturf on it uh, and Chase. Uh, then I think it's involved. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do some merch, merch messages. Merch messages, yeah. Okay, if I can, I um, inhaled some water earlier. <laughs> Thanks for making me laugh. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. As a It was my pleasure. Okay, uh, this one's from Austin. Luke. I really do enjoy your pain, though. Yes. <laughs> That's why, why I work here. The coal bar, hey? Thank you. <laughs> Um, this is from Austin. Luke Linus, in an earlier show, you said sometimes uh, you, as you scale up in a business, you have to become less efficient. Can you give some examples of that? Oh, sure. I, I mean, too, the, yeah. yeah, the easiest example of that is I brought in Luke to write scripts, right? So, so, so now we went from, let, okay, let's ignore Ed, who edited videos, and Yvonne, who did all the accounting and stuff. So let's go back to the original four-person team, but let's pretend it was only two. Let's pretend it was just me and Luke. If it's me, 
when I want to write a script, all I do is write the script and that takes, let's say four hours. Okay, now I brought in Luke. We have double the number of hours. So cool. We're gonna get two scripts every four hours. But a script still takes four hours. And when it's done, now I have to review it, which takes maybe 30 minutes. So my time certainly got more, you know, sometimes longer. Uh, so my time certainly got more efficient, but overall, it took more hours to deliver a finished product. And you basically take that, multiply it times however many levels of management, add the game of telephone that exists for every different team and individual that's involved in providing feedback on whatever it is, and you go from you know a public communication from me back in the day being like blah, 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 blah something on Reddit hit, uh, to six, seven, eight people are involved to make sure that I don't put my foot in my mouth about a warranty or something like that, right? <laughs> there's, a, there's also like team coordination. You can't all be running around with chickens, like chickens with your head cut off. So you start needing to have meetings and then, yep. okay, you try to control that. So you start building processes to make it so you don't have to have that meeting. Okay, but that takes time. And, and now you have to train people because you're trying to bring on junior people, but that takes more time. And just every added person, every single one, every additional person that you bring on reduces efficiency almost across the board by some amount some it amount. might be really small yep. but it's some amount and hopefully that added person adds more than the efficiency that they take away from the rest of the team but that equation is always happening that's why small teams are good small that's why small really teams agile. get a lot done yeah yeah, yeah. yep because you have you have less reporting to deal with you have less extra documentation yes even on a small team even a team of one you should be making some amount of documentation but you're going to be making more if you're on a big team absolutely um yeah, it's just, it is what it is. And it's frustrating, but there's nothing you can do about it. It's just going to be that way. Yeah. And like, in theory, you know, Luke's script that he spent four hours on would be absolutely perfect. And I wouldn't need to review it because he did it as well as me. But no offense, but I'm a much better writer than Luke. The, and the standards for the channel, sorry, <laughs> uh, the standards for the channel aren't going to change. It has to be to my standard. So I have to look at it. And that's going to be a consistent problem if you're in a field that, I will call artisan. Cre creative. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you're in a creative line of work. Because you're going to have a way that you like things as well. And there's pretty yeah. much no way that the person that you hire is going to make things exactly in the way that you like them. Yeah. And so, also, aside from preference, I am just a better writer than you. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't hire me as a writer. It's true. <laughs> I really didn't. I hired him to be a camera operator. Yeah. Which you're even worse at that than works, writing. That works great. Yeah. <laughs> Now, in theory, right, you you hire people who are better at things than you. Luke is a much better manager of development than I am. <laughs> I'd have no I'd have no idea where to even start. But then the inefficiency goes the other way because now Luke has to explain to me what the crap it is that he does in a weekly float plane digest document that he creates because otherwise I and the rest of the executives have no idea what each other are doing and in a meeting where I'm able to provide any feedback and ask questions. It's inefficient, but I don't see another way to do it. I think it's... It's inefficient and it is efficient. Because it's an efficient solution to a problem, but it's a problem that's created... If it, inefficiency. Yeah. Uh, this is great. Uh, best line of the WAN show actually goes to A-Prime, not to you. Oh. Uh, Luke wrote a great fantasy of a resume. That's true. <laughs> Your resume that's was true. Such It was complete. Don't do this to me, by the way. I've caught people doing this. This is not a suggestion. <laughs> But I definitely lied through my teeth on my resume. Yeah, you sure you don't? I had, I had never filmed... You sure you're not running for office? Anything. <laughs> that resume would have been really good at US it. U.S. House of Representatives? Uh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I had Is never real filmed name George? anything. I, if I, I told you in the first interview, though, right? I think so. I'm pretty sure. And then you're like, okay, we'll just film this thing. And the camera that you gave me couldn't even zoom. So I was like, nice, easy mode. <laughs> <laughs> And then I kept kind of cheating because I got all my friends to comment bomb the video really positively. I've told you this part too. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It just makes me cringe every time. Let's go. Getting it done. Oh, Don't man. do that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Don't do that to me. 
I did it, so I'll be able to catch yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's like a classic never, never bullshit, right? Yeah. Like it's um man, what did someone try to Ah, oh, see, I'm not I, okay. I'm not going to name names, but there's a number of kind of prominent personalities um, among, I would say, men in my peer group over the last, I don't know, five to ten years that have turned out to be total buttheads. Um, and basically, one after the other, I've kind of gone, uh huh, yeah, <laughs> and because there's this playbook, right, where they will, they will. They will start with unassailable fact in, in any given, you know, talk or any given video or lecture or whatever else it is. They will start with unassailable fact and perfect logical connections between their points and go, and in conclusion, a thing that isn't actually quite fact. And people who are not listening critically and analyzing what's being said will assume that because every linkage they've seen up until now was flawless... The last one must just be something that they don't fully understand. And as someone who didn't spend a lot of time uh, or pay a lot of attention in that class, but fundamentally understands um, what they were trying to explain, uh, it basically um, it basically seems to stem from an inability for most people to follow along with like a philosophical argument. Um, philosophy is basically math, but for words. So you, you have to theoretically, like if you're doing it well, you have to prove your point, go full QED, but you use words instead of numbers. Um, and so when done, when done really well, what you do is essentially create a, a bulletproof argument. You, you create proof for the point that you are trying to make. Now, obviously, uh, many philosophical arguments cannot be yeah. fully proven, yeah. um, and so you create a lot of um, you create a lot of opening. Or... Yeah, you create a lot of opening for bad oh, philosophy. Yes, yes. Uh, but done well, it's supposed to be unassailable. It's supposed to be proven. And so, as someone who is at least familiar with that concept, I I, I look at the the way I look at I look at it and I go, they know what they're doing. Right, because I understand their craft well enough to recognize it done well, and then now that I know what they're doing, when I see it not done well, I go, "Oh, then they're probably doing that on purpose too." These are bad people, um, and it's it's been it's been kind of hard for me to watch, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> I don't blame you. Next up, okay, we're in the oh god. <laughs> uh, we're in the same sort of vein on this uh, This is from Anonymous On average, how many hours a week do you guys work? Uh -huh. And how does it compare to the average hours of the rest of your staff? Too many, and I hope more than um, I have better balance these days But the lines between work and not work for me Are extraordinarily blurry Theoretically, I take every Monday off but I think yeah, right. you know for a fact that I do plenty of work on Mondays. Um, and uh, and like, it's often not even subtle. <laughs> like he's like filming at his house with a film crew. Uh, he's just not at work. He's <laughs> at home filming with a film crew. Um, like, yeah, you? I mean, that doesn't... I mean, we try not to do that any more than we absolutely have to. Like I, I, I am setting aside time. Like I'm scheduling time for things that... Yeah, but you also try not to like stay after WAN show and film videos... Yeah, more than you absolutely have to, or push when show back because of filming videos more than you absolutely have to. But that happens every single week. Well, okay, but the point is that, um, ah, uh, yeah, and so okay, a lot of what I do is also I don't know if it's work or not, but I, like it never really turns off. So like on a Saturday, I'm sitting checking analytics and reading comments on the video that released that day. Like I never, mm, I shouldn't say never, but. Mm -hmm. almost never like maybe one out of a hundred i don't check community sentiment when we release a video so i'm working every single day from that point of view but it's not like work work it's like i mean i, don't know, I was gonna say it's time i wouldn't have spent doing anything else anyway 
but that's probably because it's so ingrained in me that if I have a moment of downtime, I should be looking at channel analytics and reading comments. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Am I addicted? Is it work? I'm not sure. Somewhere in between, probably. I think pre you ask pretty much any like social media personality, and they they probably are wired pretty much the same way because yeah. I don't think you'd survive otherwise. Yeah. I've had a lot of team expansion over the last little while, mm. so there's just been a lot of stuff to do, and like it's. It's fine. I'm not complaining about it. I don't even think I've mentioned it to Linus much. Um, Nokia 1119. Linus's yeah. work revolves around YouTube, so technically him recording in his house is still work. No, no it's not technically. It that is. just is work. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that was that's, my point. <laughs> my point is that it's no different. It's just at home. No, no. That just is work. That's, <laughs> not, that's not technically anything. There's no gray area there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I okay. know I do know some people on my staff work more than they should though. I've had more than a few conversations telling people to stop crunching. Um yeah. and I never told them to crunch in the first place. Yeah. They're just like passionate people that care a lot, which is cool. Yeah. But yeah. My favorite is yelling at people to fill out their timesheets properly. It's like well, you actually cannot work for no pay. Mine's filled out right now. Yeah, you you actually I shouldn't have to fill one out. I still I will die on that hill. That's ridiculous. I That's absolutely ridiculous. Makes no sense and is complete BS. I work way more than that many hours. So oh, like, here, hold on a second. <laughs> here, oh, hold on. What, what is he doing? Oh no, I, I just, I, I thought, I thought, <laughs> fucks, um, <laughs> to give about it that I had in here, but it's just. If I have to fill out a timesheet, yeah, he, no. he should have to fill out a timesheet. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I do fill out a timesheet. Why? I just delegate yeah. it. <laughs> all right fair enough i'll take that <laughs> i'll take that <laughs> wow all right that's a that's a next level move you have much to learn still, no, young AJ, grasshopper. No, AJ, don't learn from Linus. You, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay. Moving on. Okay. This one's from oh. Brian. Linus, I didn't realize that you were a Star Wars Expanded Universe fan. <laughs> it's typing in one number a day. It is ridiculous oh, that my we have God. to do it. But the Are fact you that he delegated Luke? it is crazy. I used to be salary, and I had to fill in a timesheet. <laughs> it literally it doesn't make any sense. Okay, yeah, agreed. That part's also like actually, it's actually wrong how we do it. Just I'm not allowed bit. overtime. Why are we doing this? <laughs> Just pay me a flat amount. But it's li you bookmark it. You set an alarm. It takes less than thirty seconds. <laughs> I still did it every day. I'm like, not, I'm not, <laughs> I still don't think he should do it, but the fact that it's delegated is crazy. Why don't you just fill it in the same for like the next six months, and then if anything changes... Well, because they're going to see it ahead of time. They'll know that you did that. What's wrong with that? <sighs> it's not the day. Oh, man. It. So look. <laughs> uh, the current system is designed to ensure that everyone gets paid fairly for their time. I don't think that's how salary works, like legitimately. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how your stuff works. I, I know how, okay. like, everyone who's hourly, I know how everyone yeah. hourly works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, hourly should have to fill a timesheet for sure. I, and I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with And I, thing. honestly, I haven't really looked it up, so I could be wrong too. I, I have no but idea. But I'm pretty sure salary's... We have an actual sure. HR person now, so I'm pretty sure we've, like, looked it up. It's honestly, it would take more time to have the discussion with them about it yeah. than it would be for me to fill out the sheet, which so, is why I haven't done it yet. So deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just still ridiculous. <laughs> Apparently they check once a week to make sure that you are A, keeping up, and B, not filling it out ahead. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's why you can't fill it out ahead. I knew that bit. But like, it, it, it created enormous problems when people were filling them out ahead, or when they were falling behind, because then accounting has to waste a whole bunch of time having stupid conversations they don't have to have. Like, hey, no, you actually weren't there that day. Can you please go fix that? Like, no, 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 no. They have better things to do with their lives than chase down people's inability to track their own schedules. They actually have a lot to do. We actually have a very 
complicated accounting situation because of floodplain and creator warehouse and receiving all of our not all of our money but a lot of our money for different things from foreign currencies and like it's a very complicated job for an organization our size our accounting is ridiculous like we've gone to not small accounting firms and gone hey can we just can we just offload this to you and they've been like no <laughs> for real and it's like fair yeah like i don't even i don't even blame them like the f- the fact that we have Yvonne to 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 help create systems and to build our accounting department and to basically learn from scratch how to uh how to how to cfo like a a very complicated company is a miracle Someone in Floatplane Chats just said, you guys just reminded me to fill up my time sheet. Nice. <laughs> and I, I didn't even marry her for her math skills. Though it is why I started dating her. <laughs> is it? I, did, I don't think I knew that. Well, it was kind of how, it wasn't how we met, but it was how we like, you know, got close was she was tutoring me in math. Okay, I did know that. So she like totally accidentally was spending a lot of time with me, even though she knew I had a girlfriend. So I always joke about how she stole me, which she hates. Like, if you want to bother Yvonne at LTX, ask her to tell the story of how she stole me. <laughs> don't warn her about it. Don't, like, don't like blow her up right now. Just, just, just wait. Wait until LTX. Show up at LTX. Be like, hey, can you tell me the story? Because she won't watch my show. She won't see this. Okay, we can keep this our little secret. Tell me the story of how you stole Linus. She'll, she, she will just I feel like I feel like you're it. being mean right now. It's hilarious. You're setting her up to not enjoy LTX, though. No, no, she'll, she'll, she'll enjoy it. mean. She'll, she'll enjoy it. I'll enjoy it. However much she enjoys it I less, know I will enjoy it. it more. Oh, my goodness. That is not always worth it. Oh. It'll be worth it. Trust me. What you should do is not ask her that, but just tell her that Linus said that. No, that's not going to be as much fun. <laughs> it'll, it'll be funnier the other way. Trust me. <laughs> um, okay, moving on. Sorry. I derailed that. Sorry, keep going. Uh, oh, gee. Uh, this one's from Brian uh, Linus. I didn't realize you were a Star Wars extended oh, universe, expanded, expanded universe. Yeah, you read this already, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I tried I, to. Then I immediately pull this back. Oh, okay. It's my fault. Yeah. I think you mean was a Star Wars um, oh. expanded universe fan or extended or whatever it is. Um, but, last week, you referenced Jaina and Zek. Uh, do you have a favorite book slash character slash moment from the expanded universe? Well, none of it's canon. So that's cool. Uh, instead, we have just like absolute dog crap for Canon. Um, I, I would, I would honestly, if they put me in charge of Lucasfilm tomorrow, the first thing I would do is I would go DC uh, cinematic universe on the whole thing, and I'd be like, okay, this, 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 and this, all garbage. We throw it all away now. We're starting fresh. Like there is so much trash that makes absolutely no sense in the star wars canon now that you can't even build a uh you you can't even build a universe around it that makes any sense anymore and it's it's junk and it should be gone um as for my favorites i mean yeah i was about that age when the young jedi knight series came out that that was you know pretty enjoyable for me like they weren't it wasn't challenging reading but i did love the stories love the characters um i'd say probably the the first uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Did he start as a Vice Admiral? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, the point was, is, yeah, the 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 first Thrawn saga. Timothy Zahn. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. Zan, yeah, Zahn. Too uh, too good to be writing like crappy throwaway uh, Star Wars fiction. Yeah, because I was gonna say most of my favorite books. I'm just going through like a list right now, are written by him. Um, a lot of them are the Thrawn ones. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Thrawn trilogy, heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, The Last Command, so good. Um, you, you can, I think anyone can write a dumb character, but not anyone can write a smart character. Something that I found interesting. Uh, I shouldn't I, say that. Writing a dumb character well is also a, a very talent skill thing. I dropped the GPU. A thing. very talent skill. Yeah. This is the guy that's better at writing scripts than I am. Well, um, writing, not speaking them. Actually, I'm better at speaking them than you two. That's true. Wow, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, I'm spicy today. You speak really them not at good the same at holding time. things. How many times have you dropped that? Was it like three or four right there? 
Oh. You happy? <laughs> that did not hit you. Yeah. That, we can pretend. This one might. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think it actually did. Uh, yeah, and yeah. there's a monitor in front of him, and it skimmed right over it. That's okay. That Linus, actually, Linus owns the monitor. That's pretty pro. Um, uh, I should have put on his camera first. On your timesheet, <laughs> add, add, add Linus beat me as a comment. It did hit me in the head. Um, <laughs> it's very soft, though. <laughs> <laughs> you can get one of LDT. Something that I found pretty interesting was... Uh, I did the audiobooks, but listening to the audiobooks for the prequel series. Prequel series? Yeah. Like for the prequel prequel movies? Yeah. Oh, there's audiobooks for them. There's books for them. Yeah, that makes sense. And they're like way better. Right? They probably explain a bunch of stuff that just like gets hand waved away. I was like way more interested in it. You will find this plot coherent. (laughs) (laughs) There was a bunch of scenes where they explained like what characters were thinking in the moment. Right. Um, like the scene where uh, Palpatine, oh, there's a few different scenes in Palpatine's like throne room thing, his office, whatever. Um, there's one of them where, and and I watched the film to check this part and it's in it, but it's so subtle. No one's ever going to pick it up. He like moves his hand slightly. And in the, I don't know if this was like they added this afterwards, so it wasn't actually planned for because it's so subtle. But it's like he thought about pulling his lightsaber out, and that's where it was hidden. But he like decided not, or it was in his chair or something. I don't remember. It's been it's been years since I did it. But the audiobooks were actually like way more interesting. Got it. There's a lot of like little subtle things going on, which there's a lot of subtle stuff in the prequels because it's like a political series more than anything. Yeah. Um, so there's a ton of subtle stuff that they add in. Um, I didn't give the prequels enough credit when they came out. And part of it is their own fault, because Jar Jar Binks is actually just indefensibly terrible um, and annoying. And like, If the Darth Jar Jar plot was real, it would be so much more interesting. The slapstick, you know, R2-D2 has a jetpack now. And just uh, like utterly unnecessary cannon-breaking moments that just destroyed the immersion for me were still objectively awful. Uh, but the actual, like, political story behind it was so much more coherent than i mean anything before or since honestly yeah yep at least in the movies thrawn yeah thrawn yeah and i loved how he was like um like an alien in the like like the racist empire and like talking Mm -hmm. about that experience Mm -hmm. and everything yeah just super really good books Okay, uh, I've got one here from an anonymous. With new React channel, would you consider doing a proper reaction to the Verge's infamous PC build video as a sort of retrospective? It's actually the video and its reception that started my own PC building journey. Probably not. What if you did it to your video of building something here with him? Um, Well, then, I I mean, I feel like, okay, again, this comes back to my, my whole thing where... Why are we making this video is the question that we ask right when we start every video project. Why are we why are we bothering? What are we adding to the conversation? And for the original Verge video, I mean, there were multiple people internally that at the time were like, hey, we should do a reaction to this. And I looked at it and went, no, I think everything that needs to be said has been said. What are we actually a adding? A million to- times too. Yep, yeah. adding to the conversation nothing let's uh stay the course let's do our own thing and ultimately that's what we did and by biding our time i think we ultimately did the best response to that video which was to bring stefan onto our show and uh with him show you guys how to build a pc properly i think that was that was the the me way to react to that um the me way yeah yeah that, that's the reason i wouldn't do it because i don't think i'd be adding anything to the conversation makes sense Okay, this one's from Zachary. Hey, Linus and Luke and Dan. I love the new plushie. I went to Walmart today and saw an RGB power strip of oh. all things. What is the most egregious addition of RGB to a product you've ever seen? I haven't seen it yet, but we're hoping that um, Ludwig will customize the Swipe Plus to add RGB to the bidet. And then you'll carry it? Uh, we're hoping that we'll get the RGB version. If not, I mean, the other one's good too, but... I would like it to be RGB for gamers. You should have like activity detection. Yeah, are you, are you going to have an RGB thing? I have a bidet. No, I know, but they, they, they're not. Oh, 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 oh. Does oh, it have oh, RGB oh. in it though? I don't know. I don't think so. As long as you can turn it off, I never really care. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, you call yourself a gamer. 
This one's from Brayden. Yeah, I'm like definitely not aesthetically. <laughs> Having almost broken both of my wrists this morning by slipping mm. and catching myself with my hands, it made me curious if any of you have broken any bones. Uh, tell me the story. Is it a no? It's a no. All right. I have not broken a bone, but I have fractured one. That's a break. Uh, yeah. Um, That's just when I was break. when I was. I'm sorry. I haven't broken my screen, but I have fractured every it. Every time I say I broke it. And then I talk about it more and bring up that it was a fracture. People are like, oh, you didn't, you didn't break it. And I'm like, oh, it's whatever. It's just that I just it's, don't care. It's a, it's a whatever degree, whatever. Yeah, like it's, I don't know. It's They're all broken. Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah, whatever. Anyway. Um, but when I was younger, I, I, I grew really fast. I was basically this tall in like, I think it was grade six. And my bones were like real thin. That makes sense. I was taking some big old pills for it and all this other kind of stuff because I was like fragile. And we were snowboarding and I crouched and then went to like sit back mm -hmm. and put my hand back mm -hmm. and everyone just heard her like, Pow! yeah, that and makes it, sense. it didn't even hurt that bad, but I was like, that's probably bad. And we went down because like I was fine. I could still snowboard. So I just got up. And snowboarded down, which the guy was mad at me about. Um, but I yeah. went to the like medical that place. Makes sense. We were at Cyprus, the mountain. Uh, we went to the medical place, and he put a thing on it and let me go, and was like, "Don't snowboard anymore." And I immediately went back and kept snowboarding because that's obviously what I would do. Um, and it was fine. Every time I would fall, I would just you know not fall on that. Um, and that was it. Took a little while to recover, and then I was fine. I haven't broken anything since then. You're an idiot sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. I yeah, I, I know, <laughs> I know. But you're an idiot sometimes. Like, yeah. I just, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Like, I just, I can't. You probably would have done something similar. No, I wouldn't have. I could see it happening. Uh, I well, I wouldn't have checked to see if it was broken, there so I wouldn't go. have known. There you go. This is really funny. Um, my sister, the one that did the build. Uh, is that better? I don't think that's better. She I broke, think that's worse. She broke her arm as a child. At least mine was in a sprint. And when they did the x-ray, they found, I think it was two other breaks on the same arm Whoa. that she just hadn't noticed, <laughs> I guess, and just kept like playing or doing whatever it was she was doing, and they just healed. Like like they were like, what, what green stick fracture or whatever, like hairline fractures or whatever. Like So the, the one that she went in and got x-rayed actually had other breaks in it that had already healed. <laughs> Um, I do have a story about how I've never broken a bone, though, because I've fallen off of plenty of horses. I did martial arts for years. Um, I've done my fair share of, of dangerous sports, be it skiing, snowboarding. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else I've done that's particularly dangerous. Um, I don't know, just like, stuff. A lot of horseback riding. Like I've, I've fallen off of horses at height. I've been bucked and stuff like that. Um, but one of, the, one of the keys is knowing how to fall properly. Uh, yeah. If there's any, if there's one reason that my kids uh, do martial arts training, it is to learn how to fall. Because the difference between falling like this and falling like this is this and hurts this. a lot and this breaks your wrist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fall on the meat. And, and sp spread out the force. Yeah. Like you fall like this. Turn your face to the side. Don't go face in first. You know, all that, all that kind of stuff. Hit the ground, make sure you <laughs> exhale when you hit the ground, otherwise you're going to get winded, all those little things. Yeah, I, I played a lot of, like, pretty brutal sports and did a lot of, uh, to put it your way, fairly idiotic things throughout my years, and I never broke anything else after that because I was usually pretty good at falling. Just that time, like, it shouldn't have happened. My bones are just thin as heck, so it just... Like it went, I don't know. I didn't really do anything wrong. I like crouched and then leaned into the snow. It should like not be a bad situation, but it just, I don't know, it just was. Wow, horses. Not popular uh, in float plane chat. Tilt Lord says my sister's horse kicked her in the face and messed up her teeth. Uh, Mike Reed goes, horses are jerks though. To this day, my sternum pops when I stretch because of an encounter with a particularly kicky horse my dad had when I was a kid. Yeah, I got kicked in the head once. Fortunately, it was <laughs> by a foal. Um, I mean, she wasn't just born, but she wasn't full grown because otherwise, might man, not be here. Man, it was one of only ugh, three times in my life that I have blacked out um, 
but it was for such that's a short pretty brutal it was for such a short period she got me like right behind the ear that's bad back of the like head is bad three inches higher and to the side and she would have had me in the temple yeah uh a little lower and she would have had me right in the stem of my neck uh so it was like it was like right here um I, she probably wishes she got me there because boy was i ever mad at her i i was out for however long it took my head to go from my standing height to about here so i didn't actually fall down like i was conscious to catch myself got it um and there's the so there's a there's a process for getting horses to submit. I forget what it's called anymore, but basically you like separate them from the herd. Um, and so that's what I had been trying to do. And she had, cause, cause it's, it's to, it's to help train them. Um, and so that's what I had been trying to do. And she like got past me and I like tried to go for her and she like, like just like went wild and, and got me. And Man, I was like determined. I was like, no, you will. Your head will go like this and you will be calm. <laughs> and I'm not leaving this riding ring until that is done. I'm like so mad. I mean, you never never you never hit them. Like you never actually behave aggressively toward a horse because that's not how you build a relationship with them. But this this process is actually something that they do do in the wild uh, where they'll they'll separate one from is the it, herd is it to not discipline called breaking it. Breaking a horse? Well, no, breaking is, that when it's is wild? breaking is yeah, it's a it's kind of a different thing. Okay, I don't yeah, know. I forget exactly what it's called. I don't know that um, kind of stuff. Man, I was mad. I grew up with a bunch of horse people, but uh, no offense to any horse people listening, I, I just never really cared. I think it's part of breaking them or something, but like, yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. I have no idea. It's a whole thing. Moving on. Okay, this one's from Ryan. Have you seen the Ferrara Systems silicone-based active cooling tech? If their claims about scalability with better nodes works out, seems to have an interesting implications for future tech. Yeah, we're in touch. Um, if they have an actual demo we can actually show you guys, then we, we want to do a video about it for sure. Makes sense. Yeah, that would be, uh, be pretty awesome there. Uh, this one's from Alex. With a daughter on the way, I have been thinking about how much my dad impacted me. I now work in IT, and I think back to when he let me play Halo as long as I didn't tell mom. Do you have nice. a moment in your life that started your love for tech? I hope to inspire my daughter to dream big, too. I mean, gaming. Yeah, like, I still remember playing TIE Fighter, like, wanting to game and not being able to unless I figured out how to use the computer. That was that was it. I think that's the root of a lot of tech people from our generation. Yep, For 100%. me, I there was a buddy that I would carpool with to school and he would be dropped off at our house and then we would drive from our house, but he would be there for like half an hour before we left and he was my best friend. So we would want to play Diablo, but the only way that we could play, like it wouldn't detect the other computer on LAN, right? So we had to figure out like how IP stuff worked so we could play together. Uh, and my dad, my dad was fairly competent, so he was able to kind of lead us to water, but he wanted us to learn. So he didn't just tell us exactly how to do it, but he like guided us along the path to figuring it out. And then we ha would have to do it fairly often. And then my dad gave me a computer that was like broken that I was able to tear apart. And I like broke it way more. Nice. And then nice felt really bad. Whereas usually in the rest of my life, I'm just like, oh, I just mess with something and who cares? Like, it doesn't really matter. But I was like, you know, I actually wanted this thing to work. Yeah. So from there, I'm like, okay. I should probably do better. Now I want to figure out how to do this better. Yeah, exactly. That was that was a lot of the drive. Okay, this one's from Daniel. When Nintendo decides to make their next console, would you like to see a similar form of the Switch? A move back to a fixed console station or something new? I have an opinion here. I'll go first, I guess. Uh, fixed console station, and I know that might be lame. really, yeah, or more of a focus on it. Maybe, maybe if the dock enables more power, which was something that I think a lot of us were hoping when before the switch came like out. If it had an eGPU in it or something, something like that, sure. because sixty FPS dock. We were hanging out fairly recently, and you busted out the Wii U. Yeah. And that was really fun. Yeah, it was totally fun. We didn't even play Wii U games. We played Wii games. Yeah. It was great. Play some Wii sports. Let's Couch go. co-op is like a dead meme at this point. Yeah. Like, it, it's so hard to find co-op games. Um, and I think if there was more focus 
on the fixed console experience, more games would be made for it, you know? But I think a lot of Switch games are made uh, with the Switch being mobile more in mind. And when it's mobile, it's usually single player. Yes, there's some Nintendo titles that are like, okay, one player gets one controller and you can play with the little Switch propped up with the little leg thingy that breaks way too easily. But I don't think there's that many that are made for that. I'm going to have a bit of a um, maybe controversial take here. Um, I trust Nintendo to innovate and do something different as much as I trust them to be generally anti-consumer and money-grubbing. So yep. They're going to want to change the controllers. So you have to buy new ones, etc. Yeah, I'm going to go with um, Nintendo knows what's best for for innovation in gaming and doing something different than what Sony and Microsoft are doing. And if they decide that, uh, uh, you know, a Switch is, uh, you know, the best they can do right now, then I'm, I'm into it. If they think it should have four screens or like, uh, you know, a, a, a waggly dildo for a controller, then I guess I'm into that too. Let's, uh, let's go. They already made the Wii. Yeah, yeah, I know. That was the joke, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. I, I, I'm so sorry. I'm you got really there listening. eventually. Welcome to the party. Uh, All right, it is Chad a little Warden. wild to me that the Switch was released in 2017 and we still don't have a new one. I don't count the OLED. But, yeah. Anyways, moving on. Okay, this one's from Charles. Hey, Linus, uh, just fixed a really annoying issue with my PC, which wouldn't let it boot past the BIOS. What was the hardest tech issue you've encountered, and how did you fix it? Hmm. <laughs> I have no idea. Hardest tech issue you've encountered? Oh, man. The one I had to solve for the AMD challenge actually was pretty difficult, and I think that, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, I probably wouldn't have been able to see. Oh, I don't know. NVIDIA's whole 680i platform was like super flaky. Um, <laughs> hardest tech issue. I survived on that. That wasn't it 780i, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it was just as bad. S- survived on there for a while. Yeah. It was, uh, it was tough times. <laughs> hardest tech issue. I don't know. I've had so, like, my whole life is just tech issues. Yeah, this is a hard question because you'd have to drill through practically uh, half the waking you know hours what? of every day for the last 25 years. The stability of the WAN show stream. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that probably plagued me longest. I mean, we we would reinstall yeah. Windows, swap out literally every piece of hardware, and it would crash anyway. And like, we could both go home and stream stably. Yeah, but no we problem. couldn't couldn't stream with the WAN PC. We both tried it. it wasn't yeah. just Linus. I tried to fix it too. Yeah. I've tried now. Yeah, I, I think this Jake is has tried as well. The WAN PC is cursed. Yep. There I, you go. Um, I'm it going will to exercise always be it. cursed. No. All right. I'll bring a priest in. Sounds good. You need some holy water, and then that'll yeah. break it too. Um, but yeah, yeah, don't have a great answer. Okay, last one I've got here is from Anonymous. Hey, Luke, I was just wondering if me making a float plane resolution upscaling AI tool would be against the terms of service or any other rules. And yes, I'm one of the, I can see the need for four, 1440p. Cringe take. Um, <laughs> just run it in 4k my dude um it's just bitrate man come on uh i don't think it is i don't care <laughs> legal legal t's and c's are hard i don't think it is uh i'm not personally mad about it i, I think no it's idea. unnecessary i a lot of the ai resolution upscaling stuff that i've seen in the past is not good um but I mean, I mean, yeah. If you're just if you're just downloading the video and then watching it upscaled, like you're not even really doing anything. You could just use existing tools, like right. Oh yeah, just do that. I mean, you just do that. Yeah. You, I mean, you can't you like auto download the videos anyway, and then you could just like you'd have to sort of make that yourself. point an upscaling but tool at a folder to at the folder, and then yeah. just have yeah, it just output somewhere. Like there, there's got to yeah, be. A I way don't to, care what you do with. Like if you're your capable own... of doing this, you're definitely capable of doing it a smarter way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait, waste your time <laughs> because you could have just downloaded or watched the 4K version. <laughs> but, but whatever. All right, two more. Last two. Um, Luke, as your team grows, will you add product managers? Yep. And how do you calculate ROI from a product side? There are 
many things that this guy gets me to make that I tell him enthusiastically before making it that the ROI makes no sense. So sometimes I don't calculate it because there's no point because I tell him it's terrible and he's like, we're doing it anyways. And I'm like, gotcha. But we're a privately held company, so we can just do cool stuff that doesn't make any sense. To be completely honest, yeah, I'm not mad about it. Yeah. There's just a lot of things that we make that aren't really ROI focused. So if he's like, I don't care, then cool. I don't care either. But if it matters, then it matters. I don't know. It, uh, will you add product managers? Yes, I have to. Um, Dan from the uh, lab's website side is doing that very well. Um, it's, it's going great. AJ has been taking on more leadership responsibility recently. He's been doing a fantastic job of it. Um, and then there's actually going to be some more news in that regard relatively soon, but yeah, it's happening. Not for everything. Right. Um, but when the team working on that thing is getting relatively big, and there's a bunch of teams, it makes sense for that relatively big team to have someone uh, leading it kind of with me. Um, because doing it all myself is going to be problematic. But, yeah. And finally, uh, where'd it go? Ah, Benjamin asks, how much of the LTT channel views happens on videos older than a month, six months, five years? It ebbs and flows. Sometimes... A lot of the viewership is just coming from whatever's fresh and whatever we can do to to generate um, as as good as possible, as good a push as possible on that new content, and then it just falls off a cliff. And then six months later, the rules totally change, and that content that just kind of went and then died right out of the gate is back with a vengeance. Um, I actually messaged uh, my contact recently saying, like, hey, I'm not complaining, but... I, I do always get unnerved by what I perceive as big swings in algorithmic behavior. And this last month has been a doozy. Uh, we're on an upswing for our back catalog that I haven't seen the likes of in probably a couple of years. And uh, it's following a downswing, the likes of which I had only seen a few times in the last five years. And I'm just kind of sitting here going, guys, you're sending me very mixed messages here. I mean, they're not. You know, you ask someone like, okay, so Todd, head of search and discovery, and he'll always tell you, okay, make evergreen content, just focus on quality, focus on viewer satisfaction. It's like, yeah, I always do that. But in terms of the actual day-to-day -day performance of the videos, they send... Doesn't always reflect that way. Far less consistent messages. yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's all over the place, not going to lie. Um, but what I can say is it also depends on your content strategy, right? Like we try to make sure that every video has what I call learning outcomes so that even if you watch it five years down the line and the, the actual parts that we're talking about are completely obsolete and irrelevant, there will still be something that you can learn from it. So uh, that'll help. That'll make it more likely that people will come across it. Um, and more likely that it'll be recommended because it's more likely that people will be satisfied by that particular um video this is great anonymous okay fine one last one one last one i got your screwdriver the day after you announced it two of my friends said it was overpriced both of them have ordered one since <laughs> nice and with that i will see you again next week same bad time same bad channel bye, bye.